Seven, welcome. All right, real quick. All right, family, fill in the chat room, my uh, brothers and sisters. I appreciate y'all coming through. People texting me right now. Um, yeah, it, it's finally going down. Me and the brother, Seven Bomar, <laughs> he's on Black Magic 363. Um, yeah, welcome, everybody. I clicked so fast. I know you're all right. Yeah, it's going to be a good show tonight. This is, this is, this is going to be an excellent show. Chat room filling up fast. Um, a few announcements before we get started. I'm, I just want to allow the people to fill in the chat room. A few announcements. Um, I'm live streaming on this channel. Um, the replay of this, I'm going to put on my other channel, the God Frequency 363. Um, so I'm going to put the name in the chat room throughout the show so y'all know. But if you want to see the replay, you could just go to the God Frequency 363 to view it but um, the live stream is right here for the people right now, but it will be replayed on my other channel, the God Frequency 363. Besides that, I wanna give a shout out to Mr. G with this shirt. Um, he got the new book out about Dr. Sabi. The brother documented the last uh, years of Dr. Sabi's life. His book is awesome. I'm about a quarter through it and it's amazing. I'm actually gonna finish it I uh, set some time aside tomorrow and, or in the next day, the day after that to finish it. So I will be finished it by the weekend, but make sure you go to Dr. Sabi book 504.com to get that book. Um, besides that, um, I want to welcome my brother seven to the show. Welcome to the show, my brother. Such a pleasure to have you on the show. Man, I'm, I'm overjoyed. <laughs> I'm overjoyed. Like I know what this is about to do. So, you know, I'm, I'm in that space right now, but definitely thank you so much for Rich for just reaching out and you know sending that uh, beacon out there because I've been definitely uh, wanting to get with the community and really uh, present some findings. <laughs> Indeed, how do I sound, family? Is my audio good? I want is my audio good? How's my audio, family? Let me know how my audio because I don't want to start talking and I know Seven sounds excellent on, on in my headphones, so I know he's good. How's my audio? Is Brother Rich audio good? Let me know, family. Let me, uh... Yeah, okay, good. All right. All right, so the audio's good. We good to go. Seven, so just to start out with, my brother, um, like I said, it's a pleasure having you on the show. Um, Thank you. I want to know, you seem to be known, you, you're pretty advanced with this stuff. <laughs> you, 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 you know, you, 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 you pretty sharp with this stuff. So uh, <laughs> with, with, with that being said, I mean, the first question before we get into the heavy stuff, how did you get involved in this information? For those who may not know you, some people know you on my platform. Some people may say, what's the big deal about this brother? Who is this brother that's on Brother Rich platform? How did you get involved in this metaphysical occult information, uh, Seven Beaumont? Well, first and foremost, again, you know, thanks for opening up the space. Like this is a big thing to even, you know, make this transmission and, you know, for you to conduct this, it means a lot to me. I just want to say that first, I also want to say give honor to the ancestors who built the DNA, went through the experiences and, you know, and that that's what we're using now to process everything that we're doing. So, you know, I definitely want to open that space, but to, you know, just jump right into this and, and answer those questions. You know, I've been this. I've been in this all my existence. I know. I know everybody would want to answer like that, so I just answered like that first. But how it happened for me this life was I was raised in what you would say is a spiritual household. My mom was in the movement, and she had already learned a lot from the movement. She was very independent, and she was what movement? Her, what movement, brother? It, you know, when we use the term the movement, first of all, um, especially in the United States, we're referring to a mode of thought. Like I'm from Detroit, Michigan, so. When we say the movement, it doesn't even actually mean a specific group. It actually means a way of life and a culture. And there were many men and women that were representing that way of life and that culture. And that was, of course, just being aware of what the system was about, what it was teaching the kids, what was in the food. The same thing we're going through right now, but different households had access to that, uh, especially through, obviously, what Elijah Muhammad was producing with, with uh, his group and even after the breakup when... You know, the brothers went, the sisters went over with the Arabs, half of them, and then half of them stayed with uh, Farrakhan. That was the breakup of that movement. And uh, you have, obviously, the Panthers. You have many crews that even weren't named that were all part of this movement of awareness. And so that's, that's my background as far as my mother is concerned. And so she wasn't having it. 
She would, we were sewing our own clothes. You know, we weren't eating anything that was, was of impurities or filth as far as what they understood. And, um, and that was the environment that I was raising because I was also homeschooled. So you can imagine that this had a slingshot effect though. I do want to bring that up right away for some people that may be getting alienated, but you know, meaning that if you're raised, it's like being in church, like you're just always immersed in spiritual activity. And, you know, you kind of yearn to see the other side of things. But while I was in that, a lot of seeds were planted. And I always say now that those those seeds have become full grown. So and obviously there's been a, a succession, as we all experience, of continuous awakenings. And uh, about 10 years ago, one of them, because of all of the previous ones, were gradually getting stronger and stronger. But the last one was just so direct and a direct communication and conversation about what was really going on in this space and the high levels and then also a proof in the in the language of how to check that back so that way you're not like just believing in something and you're not in the know. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Well, one of the things that people always say, uh, well, not always say, but uh, they have been saying since I announced that you were going to be on the program is that they're like yo i'm glad the two worlds are meeting up the two these two <laughs> metaphysical worlds i'm glad they're meeting up and for, for whatever reason they thought that you know you wouldn't me and you wouldn't link together you know what i'm saying my, my style of uh interviewing or, or my style of interviewing certain teachers and your style they're like it's just it's a complete surprise to them that we linked up so i definitely appreciate uh, you coming together. It's it's important because it's like, um, you know, I always said like um, when when I'm talking to to the people, I'm like, yo, my goal is to teach metaphysics to a people who are like totally, totally, totally like like metaphysics to like a lot of people that I talk to. Like it's like, man, what the rich that that's some pseudo shit right there. What are you talking about, my brother? Like you going like you mentioned Elijah Muhammad. And for yeah. whatever reason, Elijah Muhammad was into, he talked about the moon and the earth and he talked about the stars or whatever, but that skipped over people's heads. They only noticed the mundane things, the mundane things he was talking about. So for whatever yeah. reason, when you go into extraterrestrials or to metaphysics or to entities or the, the occult realm, people get lost. So yeah. I, you know, you gotta well, be careful. I guess you gotta be careful why you, how you teach people. And that was the reason or the purpose for secret societies. Um, yeah, but I, I also, I, I do want to also address, you know, just what you said about, you know, people even thinking that we wouldn't come together. It's like, that's what they're thinking. We never said that. <laughs> you see what I mean? And this is going to be also an underlining theme in today's, you know, mega build is just, you know, how to really peep out the judgment in the, dis in the, um, in every aspect of, Judgment, and I guess the word that I'm looking for is, I guess, yeah, let's just keep it clean. Just judgment. Mm -hmm. How a person can think that division is what's on everybody else's mind. And then literally lash out, attack. You know, we've done it too. Like, that's the thing. We have to all be able to connect and see what we've mutually experienced. And we've experienced these times where we just want everything to be separate. We just want there to be us and everybody else. And that's also, you know, that, that starts stemming into psychological issues rather than metaphysical issues. But the truth is, is that if we don't come together, we'll never see the great expanse. It's like, it's just as simple as this. Like there was a parade, one person left. So no matter how lit the parade was, then once that one person left, it's never gonna be that same way again. So when one person, then another person leaves to go and find them, Thus, the parade starts getting less and less and less. Now, all of us are here mm -hmm. trying to find each other. And mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's right in front of us. And so I see what's happening now. Like, it's also very synchronistic for us to get in here on these nines like this. I know you mm -hmm. heard the palindrome thing, but just how really, if you look at a succession of the numbers that have been going on for the last years as we've been building into something, it's obviously about to be 12 o'clock. In, 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 uh, in as a metaphor, meaning that you get numerical sequences that you don't see for 10,000, 15,000 years. And so I know, you know, because I know myself, I also know what's around me, the people that are around me, that something big 
is, is happening. And what I'm doing is I'm just perpetuating and putting as much fuel into it as I can. And so are mm. you. <laughs> today, today's a full moon. What can you tell me? Let's start out with some metaphysical talk, my brother. Hmm. Um, you mentioned Elijah. I heard his teaching about the moon used to be a part of the earth and then it, something happened where it separated. I heard yeah. David Icke talk about the moon saying it's artificial, it's a satellite. What can you tell me about this moon um, that they're saying is, 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 is so influential on the earth, influential on women? They always talk about, when they talk about the moon, they always talk about women. They talk about her cycle, what she goes through, her period, our emotions, the you know, the wolf, the, uh, the wolf and all of that stuff. We hear all these things growing up. What can you tell me about the history of the moon and the earth, my brother? Let's start out well, like that. On well, the first moon. thing, I, I think we're even on that same, we're on that same vein because we mentioned Elijah Muhammad and, and there's been a lot introduced. And as you said, some brothers was listening and some wasn't. And then even the brothers that was teaching it may have not had a complete grip on exactly what they were talking about because... You know, there's been a lot of studying entities, not necessarily studying what the entities were studying, if you under understand what I mean by that. And so when we start looking at Mayat and like what was everybody studying, it actually brings you into the answer to the question of what many of these celestial bodies are. Now, more specifically at this point, the moon, because it has a lot of influence. It's known as the Lord or the star that's L-O-W-E-R-E-D, lowered down to like it even feels like you can touch it in a certain tense in the metaphor. And what this is about is the moon is an arc or what's known as a craft, it's an ophanim. And, and how this is put together is, is basically inside of, the, of, of that vessel or arc or boat, there are a, there's a 50-50 split, if you may, of beings that they were calling agreeables and disagreeables. York talked about it, the Kabbalah talks about it, all the traditions talk about that. Just like you see in yourself, what you would know as night and day, what you would know as male and female, there is a polarity, right? So the moon has a specific group of beings in there that are very large, and they're in the state of what we would know to be sleep, but they are dreaming. And as this clock spins, or this craft spins in its cycles, every time it gets lined up on a specific node, it basically refracts the sun's light and then breaks down that light and gives us this specific experience for that time of the uh, of the moon cycle. So to just you know crack into it even deeper in the womb, what's happening is the mother is actually breaking down, let's say, the sunlight or the things that you're seeing in the world, and she's eating it, and then she's breaking it down into this tube so it can go and feed the baby, right, for a pregnant woman. Right. So too, that's what the moon does with the sun, you know, it's against all of the, you know, the theories of, you know, run, you know, be afraid of it. What it's doing is it's breaking down what the sun's unhindered intelligence is really about. And it's also doing that in quarters with actual energies that emit the archetypes. That's the great word to use here. The archetypes of the energy that you feel coming across this system. So that's what it is. It's, it's just, it's a craft. It's in, in, as, as many of these, uh, these boats that we're seeing are. Why do we always hear the mission of Mars or traveling to Mars? Um, there's even pictures where people say we've been to Mars and there's the people that say that there's pyramids on Mars. What can you tell me about the history of Mars and uh, Earth? What, there must be some type of close connection that we always hear about this particular planet. Well, the thing is, is that it's actually better in a certain sense to even know the whole story, because the reason why they talk about Mars, uh, whether they're able to dial into that energy completely, they always dial into energy. When I say they, I'm talking about the people who are making up these stories about where they're going and, and what they're talking about. And they send this stuff out, like words like Zion and words like Sony and all this stuff. They send this stuff out to put in our brains that then make us think, you know, we know what it means. And then there's something specific that it means. So... I want to say that to know the whole story is to also know, let's say, for instance, that you're comprised of all of these celestial bodies also. Mm -hmm. So why a lot of people are wandering after the external, they're not actually seeing the, the true map, which is us, to answer the complete question and, and do that without a shadow of a doubt. So you become like a person who has unwavering truth. So Mars's stories is Mars is actually a guardian. Mars is a warrior. 
Mars is a cognate of also the word arms, A-R-M-S, M-A-R-S, because when they, you know, you fight with your hands. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it was placed here in the sequence of the numbers that there's a number sequence that's revealed in the seven days of the week. And in this number sequence, it stations Mars, which is number nine, as the third process. So there's number one, which is the sun. Then there's number two, which is the moon. And then there's number nine, which is uh, um, basically what, which is uh, Mars, which uh, what I just said. And the reason why Mars is there is because it's basically saying first is the synthesis or the sun. It's everything. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute. It's everything is you're trying to com comprehend it is not even comprehensible. Right. And then next comes the moon, which I explained before, which breaks down every starts breaking down stuff like a mother breaks down small particles to her child right mm -hmm. and then to really understand the ancestors and how things were built you notice they go right to number nine which is now put a guardian over it <laughs> mm -hmm. and this is why this place was known to be protected and it was known to be a place where there was some cultivating going on as the being began to imagine which the moon stands for the subconscious mind the moon, uh, uh, the beings began to imagine the existence as we know it, like the physical existence. So that's what Mars is. Mars is the aspect of things that is the warrior or the protector. They like to evoke Mars, just like they like to evoke the moon, but they always do it in an inverted way. So it's hard for you to understand that. They're interested in driving energy into an industrial complex and actually creating warriors that are gonna fight for them. Mayat's laws about Mars is Mars is actually using all of its power to protect the beloved. So mm -hmm. you got two totally different aspects of things, which would be like turning one on its head. Okay. Okay. So with uh, Mars, we talked about Mars. Um, talk to me about Saturn. It gets such a bad reputation. We hear Saturn is like basically Satan, the devil. So when people yeah. hear about Saturn in their chart, they're like, oh God, oh shit, some bad shit's about to happen. Uh, but I yeah. also heard, um, I, I recently had Billy Carson. Have you ever heard of Billy Carson? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Billy Carson, I, re I interviewed him about two weeks ago and he shared a video with me about uh, some gentleman uh, was talking about, he's seen tall black figures orbiting or around the rings of Saturn. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to me about Saturn and 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 what you and what I just said about beings being around the rings of Saturn. What you you know from what you studied? What's your take on that? Well, I mean, first of all, I will tell everybody like I go from experience. Like there is a lot of work to draw from, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to go and see for yourself because the feeling gives you all of the rest of the information. So it actually confirms what's going on for you. But I can actually check base in the reality because as above, so below. So anything that I say, you should be able to check through all realms and it connects. So when we talk about, let's say, just specifically some of the things that you said, because Saturn is known as the old king. Saturn is the previous sun. All of the beings that were in that, that realm, which still exists as this thing keeps pushing the entities further out towards the rim, all of them were very large. Like if you can imagine even the Aurochs, which are large, large cows, the bovids, large, larger beings, or even more recent. So you see this, you can see the mass of the Dogans. They had these masks that look like large men's faces. These are the Hyperboreans that even Martin Kinney talks about, the ones that are on out on the furthest part of the rim, which is really the section, section eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. But section eight, because <laughs> Saturn's number is eight. Saturn is related to anything that exists for a long time. Jewels, gems, knowledge, wisdom, right? So again, what's happening in the society is that they only tell you, because these are all your ancestors, they only tell you the inverted aspects of them. They tell you the, you know, basically everything they, they, they may have done wrong by comprehending what they do right or everything they do left versus everything they do right. So it's like, if somebody's only highlighting just the bad stuff about you, I'm going to form this impression about you. And then that, that's going to be my impression about you. And I may never talk to you because of that impression. However, just notice that it's whatever you make things in your mind as a being that actually is everything. I mean, you can mm -hmm. knock on foreheads about that. Mm -hmm. The more separation you do, there's just going to be how long you stay here. Like, mm -hmm. this is a real deal. You got folks that have been in the prison of their mind for a long time. This was a creation that was put together 
just kind of piggybacking on what Buddy was talking about in relation to Devil Brain, Yakub, a last, a last ditch effort to actually put a universal teacher over all of mankind, i.e. a master race, because just like you see with kids, if you have any, sometimes you can't just give them everything that they want. You can't just not punish them because they never learn their powers. Right. And this is what I was actually wanting to get to really in the beginning of this conversation, which was that you are the fruit. Okay, you are the fruit because there's a metaphor in this, like the fruit is not the seed, right? So everything about us is the fruit. I mean, the fruit is around the seed, okay? And the reality is everything about us is likened unto trees. So if we could see our parents, this full grown trees with all of their abilities and knowing everything, we can see ourselves as the fruit. So in this mm -hmm. metaphor, when the fruit falls from the tree, the first thing that happens, even as it's dropping is the birds or the bards, which are sometimes known as the angels, begin to pick the flesh off the fruit. Okay, mm -hmm. just listen to this story. That is the payment. In this university, there's a tuition. That is the payment for the tutelage that's about to happen as you're in this fall, okay? Now, I wanted to, to preview this first with just realizing the fruit contains everything the parents do, including the seed and everything, but it's not grown yet. So there's not an awareness of what it has. So it's just like with your children, if your children are born into ultimate wealth, they don't know they're rich. They don't know about ultimate wealth and what all that even means. They just mm -hmm. think that that's normal. Same thing if they're born in poverty. It's too, you start introducing these concepts that they, oh, okay, I can relate through contrast, okay? So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's important for us all to just see in metaphors what the truth really is. So this fruit is falling. Now it's being, the, the, the meat has been ate off of it, all the fat. That's what it stands for, the fat, the luxury, the abundance has been ate off. Now, as just a seed in the pit, when you hit, you touch down, you touch down really in the water, you touch down into the womb, and the deeper you grow, go, the higher your tree can be. And if you know anything about planting, <clears throat> specific seeds have to be planted to a specific depth in order for them to be able to grow. So that's your own personal orbit. That is you, like how much you're gonna to need to learn in the underworld before you get back to the surface. So I wanted to kind of paraphrase this whole experience because it's important then, because a lot of people wanna unlock their powers. They wanna unlock their abilities and by all means they do exist. But what they're missing is, is that it takes something to have to use that stuff on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like this stuff is like, you can't even go to sleep. So there needs to be a mission or a purpose that you have that is the sum total of the power that you're receiving. So if you're actually going out and saying, hey, whatever beings you're talking to, give me this, you're actually talking, but you're talking to the disagreeables because they're the only ones that fulfill those kind of selfish ones because they have a limited amount of power. But if you're saying, hey, let's do this for everyone, then you start waking up agreeables because they're like, wow, we're maybe somebody's down there that may be able to hold the power without becoming corrupted by the power. Now, we have enough examples of men and women that have been passed a mantle to actually carry out a mission to basically take all the humanity into the highest level of who they are. So far, you can see how that's going, not to judge anything. So even from just surely, surely that, I'm going to make sure I complete the mission because nobody ever completed it. And this is how we all should feel. It's like, yo, forget doing the repetitious thing because you're going to like be in the club forever. And you, you already seen the result. Look at grand, great, great granddad. Look, you've seen the results of so many things. So why not invest your time in doing the extraordinary, right? Like what's not ordinary, going to the original, like actually taking the lesson instead of like a kid that constantly needs to be spanked. Because like I said, they literally almost put what you would be akin to an AI. This is, uh, let's say, our, our ancestors. What is akin mm -hmm. to an AI, which is like a certain, a certain type of reptile, over the entire thing in order to make sure that there's a rule. And that's what Saturn also stands for, law. Saturn's name is Bar in the ancient tradition. It means a desert, dry. Okay, so if they put a ruler or a rule here so we can start understanding how to go straight. We know about the curve, like the whole fall and all this process of learning about earth. That's all five. That's what you learn in the pyramids or the prism, right? Where there's all these separations and colors and all this kind of stuff. But once you put it all together, when you put all of the wisdom and the knowledge and experience together and make it a synthesis, which is a sun, 
it becomes a sum total of everything. And there's no way you can get to that looking at even some of the petty players in the matrix and actually judging them as not being a creation themselves or something that you put together. And this is where supreme power comes in is to realize we did this. We created all of this. We created the internet. We created the Apple and all, all this stuff, man, we all created. The thing is, is that though with parents and their kids, notice how you have a lot because all that creations are kids. So you have a lot of parents that I didn't create that. <laughs> That's why there may be some un uncomfortable truths that come out today. That's why if anybody ever sensed that there was some kind of division between me and the community, it's just because I have already seen the sum total of this whole thing and it all stems into non-judgment. That's the only way, if you, if you don't judge, you cannot be judged. And this is deeper than you think. It sits inside of the mind that you're literally you saying this is a cup, literally you saying this is a, some wood makes these elements more powerful than you because it actually, they're convinced of what they are. But mm -hmm. to rise above the elements is to actually say, nah, even you're not that. <laughs> and mm -hmm. hold where you are, what they call like the faith. They start calling this faith. Be, be able to hold where you are in your consciousness and your awareness until all of a sudden the wood start particleizing. Then it'll start, it'll just disappear. It'll turn into other things that you want. And then people think that this is a game. And now they, they, they come out with this astrophysics, all these different stories. And, it, and you know, if, we're, if we had all day to do this and all night, I would say by all means, keep doing this. But it appears that also there was alarm clock put on the thing that everybody didn't have an infinite amount of time inside of the, inside of the vessel to actually figure all of this out. Because in timelessness, which is called the nectar, everlasting life, <laughs> None of this goes on. There's no urgency. There's no, none of that. So mm. inside of time, that's the training module because there's time is fire. There's fire on the back of you when you start running out of time. And this urges you to go and do things that you otherwise wouldn't have done if you just had all the time. And so, you know, I, I'd love to let's just keep the bill going here. <laughs> Indeed. Wow, man. I mean, I, I mean, I'm supposed to be asking questions, but I could just sit here and listen. And <laughs> okay, so let me let me just finish the question. And you were saying so Saturn. So the Saturn plays this role, right? And he's mean, like he ain't playing a radio. It's like your great, great, great grandfather. It's a rule. So what happens is, is that it's like why your grandfather or grandmother will smack you or something and you ain't even do anything. It's like they already know kind of like the whole process you're going to have to go through. Even when you look at youngsters now, you know the whole process they're going to have to go through, even to get on the metaphysical mindset of where they need to be to take care of their bodies. So too, like if you're talking about a being that exists for thousands and thousands and the countless, Saturn is the Lord of time. So that means that he, he sits outside or it sits because it's not even a male. It, it's, it, it's a parthenogenic mm -hmm. being. All these beings across the other side are all androgynous if you want to give them some kind of sex but mm. it's actually so far beyond these divisions and that's why i really get excited about the whole thing that we see actually going on here contrary to what most people feel most of the time first of all that's the only thing that i control but can control is my own feelings but also because if we're sitting here and all of this knowledge ain't even known about and we're still even able to kind of like move around and still talk to each other, man, wait until you see what this thing is gonna turn into as people become more and more aware of who they are. Like we were even just getting little, we get tidbits of this thing all the time. My brother was telling me today and, and maybe he'll drop the name and type it to me, but there was a treaty that actually says that the Mexican people could not teach their knowledge to anybody in the world until 2020. <laughs> mm. And if you understand that the last culture, it's land, the last culture to actually really write annuals and pass like the knowledge of what all this Messiah stuff means, Menelik, you know, Murugan and Solomon and in and, and the Nagas and Nas and Nazis and in and, 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 and the supreme race, the alien, the high creature. The last time that was like written out enough and it was found by someone, which it kind of fell, fell into the hands of evil, quote unquote, that way, was out in, in what we call Mexico, the Sun Temple. And the reason why you know this, and this is what anybody on the Ark knows, meaning anybody who knows world geometry, like not just some of these petty organizations that basically are frat brothers playing around with each other. We're talking about the real craft, what 
every being that comes to the earth must learn from. So in Egypt or Kemet or Alkibulan or whatever name you want to give it, in that space, they built on the qubit. Mm -hmm. Measurement systems are the only form of communication at first because languages by powerful beings is not you. Everything you speak is going to come into existence. So you sit in silence building in another world like what you call your imagination or Rahu. So in this certain tense, it's like, the qubit is the, so how, let's, let's imagine we're on different sides of the world, right? And we now got to figure out how to measure stuff. Do we all come up with the same measurement system? <laughs> no, this is impossible. Like I use the stick, you used your toe. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there could be different measurement systems, but there is one measurement system that is seen throughout the world in different places as an indicator of that priest craft, if you made that builds like that, and they build on the qubit. So just like Billy was saying that there at the total, at the end of Kemet, there was a schism, like a father and son, uncle and son conflict. And the son decided to leave after debasing a lot of the materials and the statues and the things that were going on out there. And that son was uh, what we now know today as Akhenaten. Exactly. And Akhenaten went into these lands. Now, first of all, I want to bring just everybody in on the window on this and how why people respect you when you go throughout the land back in the day. Because unlike now, where we have a lot of Chinese counterfeit manufacturers, if you were wearing any seals and signets of the main beings, nobody, like everybody knew that stuff. So when these, these people, they were basically like, this is the prodigal son story, taking all of the treasures. That's why they say that's also Moses, taking all of the treasures and even the Ark of the Covenant, which was the power module, and then going and walking off with that and leaving his mother and the father and the ancient king to the crumble because he wants to be worshipped as the only God or the sun God. And this is, again, an uncomfortable truth because with that and going to some of the other people in the distant lands and just ruling over them, this knowledge of the craft, which is deeper, it involves the woman in the womb and all sorts of stuff, fell into eventually the hands of Albert Pike. This is stuff is not too much more long, too long ago. People think for, it's think 400, 500 years, not 5,000, 6,000 years. There was already a, what you would call a craft. You know, that's what Taj Tariq Bey is attempting to explain so proficiently to everybody that, listen, they're what before, they didn't write any of this stuff. Like, you know, this book right here, let me just grab this. This is, uh, this is a bridge to the light, okay? This is the number one Masonic initiation book, okay? So when you understand what's in here, you see as a person who's a writer, I'm an author, that somebody else, this is somebody else's knowledge and then somebody else comes in and starts writing a couple paragraphs and then somebody else comes in. You can tell that just like if I'm speaking to you, I know if I'm talking to you versus I know if I'm talking to somebody else. So you got to ask yourself the eloquent side of this because it's full of a bunch of that. Where does that come from? And that comes from the mystic nobles and the orders that was already governing the realm. As I said, the Saturnalian nobles that, you know, governing the realm and creating everything in a, in, a, uh, in a segment of being in a rule, like a rulership, mm -hmm. okay? And so too, again, with everything, like you got all this power, and there's other stuff. This is what they're, what really, that's why the alien component started coming into play because it's not just you trying to figure out what to do because you have everything. It's also that there are other beings living here and anybody that's been on a decent journey can tell you that. But since we're always talking about aliens, honestly, the aliens are no further than a tree, mm. <laughs> an actual tree. Like when you go, I live in the jungle, you hear rain going on right now. They talk about Aya, Aya means snake. So we know what ayahuasca means, the great serpent, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get on enough of that stuff and you sit out in the jungle, sure enough, you see lots of these. And to say every single serpent is evil is just as silly as saying every human is good. And I'll say that over and over again, meaning that this is where we lack judgment. Because, I mean, we, we lack our abilities of powers because we have judgment. Because think about how if you got to sit at a table with every single being that is on the planet in order for, us, for you to completely be aware of who you are, what are you going to look like if one of them scares you? or one of them you don't respect or have any respect for, it's gonna look like you're scared of yourself and you don't right, have right. respect for yourself. 
Just like Big said, picture me being scared of somebody that breathed the same, same air, air as me. Okay, yeah. so when you're walking across the realms, picture you being scared of another form that is created from the same thing that you're same creating. Essence, from. The same essence, yes. Right, but if you reinforce in the physical realm, which is like a dream within a dream within a dream, if you're trained to reinforce this idea that you're actually separate from everything, this bleeds off. That's why a lot of people want it. They want a lucid what? dream. You can't lucid dream until you actually realize that you're, it, the easiest way is a lucid dream until when you realize that you're connected with everything. Well, this is the thing, uh, uh, Seven, as far as, and I was about to ask another question, but I usually get redirecting based on what the person says. Um, mm -hmm. One of the reasons for that may be um, pitching me being scared of, if Big said pitching me being scared of a nigga that breathed the same air as me. Mm -hmm. uh, niggas breathe just like, I forgot how the rest of it go, but um, we're taught, not just by religion, but even by people, we could go, we could go to study Stolen Legacy, George D.M. James, or we could talk to the, 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 the biggest ancient Kemet scholars in the world, and they'll tell you that this is a prison or prism for the human soul. So we're taught that this is the lowest of existence of the human soul possible. But mm. my thing is that what I'm trying to understand, Seven, is that why is this realm that we consider so lowly, so dense, so, so, so bad? So, you know, when, when you fuck up, you come back down to earth. Why is it so appealing to other entities? And I talked about this with Billy Carson. This realm, motherfuckers want to possess people in this realm. Mm -hmm. um, 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 it just seems appealing, this mm -hmm. realm. So wh why is it <laughs> talked about? And one last thing, I know sometimes I talk too long. The, usually sometimes the person be like, yo, your sweater's whack, yo, that shit is trash. Next thing you know, that nigga wearing your same sweater as you. you like, yo, I don't want <laughs> I don't that, want that, that is the best example right there. It seems <laughs> I. It seems <laughs> ideal for someone to tell you that something that they really want is worthless. <laughs> <laughs> and get you to and convince you of that. Like, let's say, for instance, just on the bottom line to this, this is our home. We eat from here. Our family eats from here. Our mothers have been here. So I at least want this one. Like in the baller mentality, I, I would at least want to sustain and keep this. I would not leave like trash in this one. Like I got another one to go to if I haven't actually seen that yet. So right. it does seem very ideal, though, that if we're taught to actually hate this for whatever reason, like it's a because it see. It's a forked tongue. The serpent speaks with a forked tongue. It's a mm -hmm. paradox in the tent. So when they say, oh, it's a prison, it's because it's a prism, P-R-I-S-M. It's a refractor okay. of light. Ooh, and okay. as you see these- What does that mean though? Well, I, that, that what that, sounds, what yeah. that means is, is that when you have the sun, like I told you before, the sun is light is like unhindered. So mm -hmm. even if you, if, you took, if you went on a journey and you stand at, stare at the sun, you'll be overwhelmed. Like this shit is not a game. Like you will go beyond the degrees. This is what they call it, the degrees of knowledge. You'll just get so full up, you'll just lose yourself. So there's a refractor, meaning something that's got to break it down. And that's why they show you the measurements of the moon and how the moon functions literally as a refractor of the sun's light. So how, when light is refract, what does it create? A rainbow, okay? Also known as the prism, mm, yes, okay? Yeah, yeah. Now this is etymologically the prism because now you got these divisions of colors. You got red, you got yellow, you got these different stages, right? And then everything is created within this division. So that way it's like lay this shit out on the table for me. This is what's what your parents are doing. Let me lay your powers, all of you. I'm gonna crucify you on this. This is known to be the spokes. I'm gonna lay you out over this so that you can see everything that you actually are. So that way you know who you are. And this is, this is it, it sounds rhetorical, but it is actually as simple as that. It's like, we get a chance to experience the raw, the raw way now. Like the prison now is actually inside of our mind. We have to basically, as even the minotaurs, and this mm. is why I show, I show the geometry behind this. You got a minotaur basically sitting on the back of your head as a superior brachium, mm. meaning Jesus Christ on the cross. And I'll actually put it up on the screen if you need to see it, the audience ain't seen it. It's sitting on the back of a person's head. Okay, there, clear and visual sight. So, but where is everybody else looking? So I'm just saying like the reason why things have been to this stage, and this is why we see what they call the prophecies being fulfilled. The prophecies are just predictions because 
to be honest, there's, there is nothing new under the sun here. This is like a light ray or a disc that is continuously playing out a, a simulation, a simulation in a certain way yeah. of a sequence of things that happen that let you become aware of your uniqueness, become aware of who you are. And so, you know, that's what people sometimes call zodiac signs. Sometimes people call it, they call it different things, but it just means that you need to turn a complete wheel. Mm -hmm. It can happen inside of the language where you start realizing the linguistical puns and how they're actually referring to something. Like if you look in the Arabic language, they tell this story that I told you about the moon where the alien is in the craft, he's known as a sailor. And you know, he came here, he's a goat serum and a seraphim. This is all the Elohim, all that is actually built inside of the standard conversation. Not just the words Elohim, Elohim, not just those words, in the standard conversation. It's, it's all built in there and it, tell, it tells more. It tells about, again, these uncomfortable truths, birds, larger birds, larger snakes, as actually being on the same level as far as thinking is concerned as men, and actually even being in many tenses a bit more advanced than men. And if, again, if you wanna understand just that world, that's what I keep saying about the trees that are around us. And of course, why in, in, in New York and different places, there, there are no trees. There's like, there's a separation, there's a cut off so that people don't naturally grow into who they are so they will struggle against it. Let me show you why this will happen. Because if you don't, if you just give it away, then you ain't, it's, you're not worthy of it. So you can go through experiences where you just give away your precious jewels, your mind, real estate in your mind, your sexual organs, your nature, your Kundalini, all of that stuff. Those are your, when you perfect those things, they equate to higher powers. So at first you'll squander your, your talents in the, king, in, in the kingdoms of the world. And then when you're broke, mm -hmm. when the wheels broke and you can't turn anymore, then you hit rock bottom. And it just so happens that on rock bottom is the top. <laughs> just like on the top of things is the bottom. That's, the bottom. that's in geometry, that's how it works. So a lot of people hit rock bottom and then all of a sudden they open up an ability. It's happened to me. This is product of why you're seeing me here now. I had hit rock bottom at a certain stage. And I already you, told you. How, I, how do you hit rock bottom, my brother? I hit rock bottom because they were about to throw me 33 years. Just, just the mention of, of, of putting me 33 years in a prison. I seen you. Like they're doing many like, men. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, no. So I went and hired a high, a high fluting lawyer, and he couldn't budget. He wasn't even ignoring me, not answering the calls. But that seed that was planted said, yo, I think you should probably call God, yo, mm. because this is serious. I mean, I don't know what men result to when they get into situations if your mother is never going to see you again. You mm. see what I mean? Like, this is play play. Even look, think about this. Just let's rewind here. Think about this. The reason why we even had an opportunity to sit down here and discuss all of this is because of a luxury. Like we can't discuss aliens on internet and, and all this kind of stuff. And then there'd be some real pertinent stuff that actually needs to be done. And we feel comfortable with sitting here and doing that. This is a luxury. So when we re if we think that in the future that these luxuries may somehow be removed from us, then we, start, we need to start tapping in the mode as if we don't want that to be removed. So because I've been in that mode in my life before that I didn't want my freedom to be removed, I started realizing once every, I realized everybody was getting their freedom removed, that I, since I had a formula of how to get that undone because I needed, for my, I needed it for myself, that I would give it to everyone else instead of being like Smeagol and trying to crab it, sell it, or do anything. The first book that was published, The Code of the Matrix, that tells all of these codes in a language and how to start unraveling things in your brain, the book was published for free. So I've always been here delivering powerful, massive knowledge and turning this thing upside down and right side back up. But the reality is, is when it's time, because your training is also going on. You don't want people to thwart your growth because you get so many people around you saying, oh, you're the greatest. And really to the fact you're not because you haven't put the wheel completely together yet, you're still in judgment, right? So think about how, you're, how powerful you can be when you got a bunch of people around you telling you, oh, you don't like them, right? Oh, those people are the bad ones, right? And then it's continuously this point to point system of division is continuously reinforcing, separate, separate, separate. First it's the color, 
right? Then it's a specific family. Then it's a person. Then it's your mother. You know, some of this new teaching is like, yo, stay away from toxic people, even if it's your mother. So now they cut you from your mother. Stay away from your brother. You know, he, he's not on the right. So all these different divisions and category boxes only show us one thing. Division ain't the way to go. No part of it. And once you unlock that in your consciousness, because that's also how the body works, the body's got to work together. The brain has got to work together. All of the divisions that you're thinking are petty. You may be doing the black and white thing. You may be doing the night and day thing. You may think they're petty, but you're reinforcing the signal to your consciousness that's still saying, I'm not ready to have, I have full awareness of who I am yet. And, you know, and, and that's some deep stuff, man, because when you think about that and you can think about even with yourself and this is everybody on the line, how long it would take you to stop judging other people. If I said that's how long you're going to be here, then you'll realize why they call it a prison. And you'll realize why a lot of people are actually doing time right now. And the only thing I had locked into while I was in there doing my little seven months because I definitely got up out of that whole thing with the power that is invested in all of us. What I got a chance to think about, though, was exactly the formula, again, of how to actually unlock, how I don't need to be put into a crazy situation where everything that I cherish is taken away from me for me to unlock into the total being who I truly am and live my highest potential. Mm. You see what I mean? Why, why do I always got to wait for the, the sky to be falling? for me to actually lock into my superpowers and abilities. But you've also seen even in your life, when you see the best of brother Rich, it's shoot, when the bills need to be paid and the money ain't there yet. You know what I mean? It's like a whole nother part of you that comes out and it makes it happen. I stay in that mode at all times because I just and, and, feel like that the earth is like that. <laughs> indeed. Speaking of bills, make sure your family, make sure you'll donate to the Cash App. I uh, recently, <laughs> I just posted it. Uh, if you all enjoy this bill, you enjoy what I do, independent media, you'll know how important it is to support independent media and how important it, how hard it is to find this kind of information on the internet. I advise you to support this channel to get more of it. I just posted the link. Please support this channel. With that being said, uh, Seven, I want to ask you, you showed a book uh, mm -hmm. a little while ago. Uh, was something about this, the light or something like that? Yeah, the bridge to the light. The bridge to the light. So mm -hmm. the, your book, the bridge to the light. Well, that's not of, my book. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Is. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just showed the book, the bridge to the light. Uh, just tell the yeah. people the author just in case they want to, because people, they, yeah, they, they I love think to it's buy Hutchins. Things. Hutchins is the author. Right. And, Hutchins. you know, and that's just to kind of take a look at the buffoonery yeah. and what's been, you know, taking from you and put into that new craft. <laughs> Indeed, but what, what I, shout out to um, Jay Burnett who just donated Cash App. But what I want to ask you about, because mm -hmm. my psyche and what's going on, what's going on in the world today. A lot of times, I like to, I, I, I found out to teach people. You take ancient history, ancient teachings, and you use a modern example, and you and you compare it to the ancient teachings, and, and they just learn faster that way. So what, what I want to do right now is I want to use a modern example with something you have said before. Um, mm -hmm. I was watching a video of yours and he was talking about symbols and you said sign, signs and symbols can be used to provoke a level of thought and feeling inside of our consciousness that may instinctually feel right. So this means that the level of manipulation that you're dealing with today is utilizing that symbolism in order to trigger us into believing certain things. Yeah. I want to talk to you about, and because of that, that cover of that book, I want to, it reminded me of what you said, the, the whole gay movement, LGBTQ, I believe is what, what the movement is what it's called. And when they utilize their symbol, the rainbow or uh, a version of the rainbow that we see pretty much everywhere. I mean, if you go to Starbucks, if you go to retail stores, if you shop online, you see this symbol everywhere and automatically. 10 years ago, if you seen a rainbow, you thought a rainbow. Now, if you see a rainbow, you think about the gay movement. And mm -hmm. an example you used was the Maltese cross. And you said it was taken by the Maltese Templar, Templar uh, to represent power, but its original meaning goes back to the ocean. So you're, you basically said that symbolism is taken in form and fashion into the idealism 
of whatever that group of people want you to think. So would the gay community, would that, them taking the symbol as a rainbow, would that be an example of what the Knights and Templar did with the Maltese cross, utilizing something that's instinctual with us to get them to go, to get us to go along with their agenda? It's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. What it is, is, is that you'll see it everywhere. It's this continue, it's an instigation. It doesn't matter what it is. You'll find this in your mind. The moment you start trying to unify, you'll start having all of these thoughts of division. You'll start, things will start messing with you even. This is something that is almost like, it's, it's a program, okay? So it's, it's like inside of the consciousness. It's a virus in itself. It's actually connected to the seven deadly sins because you don't witness really any of the seven deadly sins in nature by the natural animals, okay? Mm -hmm. So what happens here is, is that, this virus in the mind, which is now being purported through media, is going to just show us anything that makes us feel uncomfortable one way or another. So if there's people who have problems with LGBTQ plus LPON, then it's triggering them to go into division. If there's people who have a problem with people jumping over the border from the other countries, then it's triggering them. If there's people who have a problem with Freemasonry, then it's triggering them. If there's people who love Jesus, then it's triggering them. So what happens is, is that there just becomes this huge cesspool. And this is just really what's happening when, when you're on the Arabot, like when you're actually seeing it from a Mandelbrot and you actually look at the whole thing and what it is and you just realize the algorithm, not the details to the whole damn thing. You, you see how every single being is basically a piece in the division, because this is what happens in the division. Every single being is a piece of the other person, but broke. It's like a broken mirror. And in order for us to put it back together again, we have to see ourselves through everything. And I'm going to keep mentioning this. You're going to have to see that part of yourself because it's interesting because it may not be a lot. That's kind of, that's how the, the sky works. And that's how the, the, um, what, what would be the essence of the energies that come through work. It may not be a lot, but you'll be doing it in your own percentage of who you are on the planet as far as when everybody is add together that we make up all of these different modes of thought and all of these different uh, uh, colors and frequencies. So what I'm saying is if you keep getting agitated and you keep having the thoughts of division, which literally break your mind, it's like you become hooked to it. You're only like looking for things to actually feed the division monster. And then from there, it's like you waste a beautiful mind because you're, it's like your gift, you're just wasting your gift because it's like you get fused out and people are, are there. That's why it's like no power. And that's why it's important to study the energy of the body, like the breathing and how all that works because you learn it in a whole different way. You even watch how your thoughts lower your energy. And you even feel the thoughts that raise the energy. You start seeing that even we talked about today, like your nose. And if one side is clogged up and the other one's open, it, all these are regulators for what's going on in the cosmic system inside of your body. So if you're fighting outside, and that's why it also is not only shown, but it's a metaphor that who you really are is pointing in this direction on the back of your, your skull right there where your pineal and all that is. Maybe I just have to throw that picture up. It's a metaphor because... It's literally saying like that, that's what ignorance is. You're, you got instead of looking within yourself, you're looking out there. So let's say, for instance, you're mad about something and you don't want it to happen anymore and it stops. What's going to happen next? Well, you're going to find something else to be mad about. If that's <laughs> your habit, now you're doing what also our ancestors told us never let anybody do. Never let anybody steal our joy. Mm -hmm. Because the, that, to be honest, as the Stoics talk about, that's the only thing that you really have control over is how you're feeling in that moment. I've had times where I was laying on a bunk bed. First of all, I had times where I was laying in a mansion in a pool with jacuzzi and the whole thing was white early in the morning after a club with all of that and everything just being totally white to actually being in a bunk bed with a sheet over the bed looking also with a towel over my eyes looking into the entire white and I can tell you they look like the same thing the only difference was is in my consciousness I felt that I was in different places right and so the truth here is and I'm not sure if I'm still on this line here but I think it's I think it may, yeah, yeah, it may yeah, have went out okay good okay I can now yeah, yeah. pop back up it kind of went out for a minute but so basically the only thing is is that how am, how am I thinking 
So I learned how to transform my mind and let my mind and my consciousness transform the reality that I'm in by consistently forcing a world that I was in control of, not a world that was in control of me. And slowly but surely, the external world started letting loose and I was put through the proper paces by the higher self to actually be able to come into this awareness. But it, it is a step-by-step -step process. And to be honest, it's like you gotta want it because anytime you even go on journeys, when you're done, you don't say right away, man, let me go, let's go back on another journey. But when you go to the club and you're done, it's almost like, yeah, man, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go back, man. Let's, so there's an urgency to get to that. Likewise, working out, let's take it into something normal. You, most cats don't like get super excited about having to go work out if they're just trying to stay in shape, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the stuff that builds you. The journeys build you. The meditations build you. That's how most people are at first about meditations. Like, man, I don't want to meditate. This is like a chore to me. But then once you realize that you're not supposed to just be sitting there, that you can breathe a certain way and it feels like you're high on this bliss and this starts activating, you feel all sorts of stuff going on, then you start realizing, okay, this is a, there's a benefit to this. So that's, that's what we're talking about here, is training ourselves with things that are gonna benefit us and removing like a cancer, like a virus, removing the things that we can't not only do anything about, but we peep game. Mm. Because once you start seeing, it's just like, okay, so I see what it is. Anything that you're gonna train me to agitate, be agitated by, you're just gonna keep throwing it in front of me. And then I'm gonna rage out because I can't control other people. So the power is I need to control myself. Ooh, well, let me ask you this. So let's talk about the whole creation process, how to create our reality. Since you're talking about being agitated and my study of emotions and emotional reaction, let's talk about this. So basically the, what we see or what we think we see or what we, instead of seeing what we project, our brain is encased in darkness. Our brain is sitting there like, what the fuck is going on out there? And our senses is like, all right, nigga, I'm gonna tell you what's going on out there. Let me explore this realm and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna shoot it back to you and you could decode it and, and, and you could convert it into digital format and, and you'll figure out what's going on. So our brain is in darkness. Our, our, our feelings, our senses, our vibrations basically send signals to our brains and they say, this is what's going on via vibrations, vibrational signals. Our brain converts that into some type of holographic reality. So basically our emotional reactions to whatever is going on continues to tell our brain, this is what you have to continue to create. So if I see something that I'm very upset at and I'm, and I, and, and I'm heartbroken over it and I'm heartbroken over it, or, or let's say I break up with a girl and she cheated on me and she, let's say she happens to be black and I go around and I tell all my friends, these black bitches ain't shit. I, let me tell you why these black bitches ain't shit. And as I'm saying that in my emotions and I'm moving my hands, my brain is saying, all right, what, what's going on out there? So my brain is going to continue to create this reality. So it becomes a loop. So I'm saying these black bitches ain't shit. And my brain's saying, okay, 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 I got you, I got you. Keep telling me. So my brain is going to keep producing this holographic image. And I keep thinking that's reality. But what I don't realize is that I keep feeding the very thing that I'm seeing. So talk yes. to me, is, is yes. what we're seeing, is, it, is, our, is, is what we're seeing nothing but our brain decoding system, uh, Seven? I'm glad I got this up here. Let me just show you yeah. this and show yes. the audience this. Let me put okay, this on. this is what on. I was- Give me a second, let me put this on. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. This is what I was referring to. This is the superior brachium. This is in the back of your head. This is not just a, you can go and Google this right now and take a look for yourself. I'm not sure exactly what's going on in the dimension, but it seems like we can't see the obvious until it's time. That's why it's important for us to not have any enemies in all this, like somebody could actually oppose us, like something could actually be more powerful than us. Because the reality is when you see how all this is put together in the sheer proofs, you realize that there's also some timing stuff that's going on here where there's this little play that goes on with the good and the bad, just like kids. And then all of a sudden, or, or immature kids, and then all of a sudden you start figuring out that, man, I, I'm actually more 
and I'm beyond. And now I have this ability to, to step into a higher level of my existence. And it's all about whether I want to go there or not. Do I still want to stay in division? Like they say, stay in Wonderland and keep dealing with the stuff that you cannot change or get into your consciousness, get into the seat of your consciousness as you see and activate. Notice how right here, this is also known as the Menelik or the MLK. That's why they called it Martin Luther King, because it was another trigger. If we want to talk about triggers today about that old king, which is what's also known as Moloch. That's why they demonize Moloch as being the horn god, which is, of course, the, the minotaur sitting in the middle of the maze. And as we see, this is superior brachium. You have a pineal gland sitting here as a reference of what part of the brain this is. That's also in the center of the head of the other being that is sitting, that is, is, is in the seat of the consciousness, because that's what I was saying before. It's an infinite recursion, okay? Meaning that it's a Mandelbrot. So there's another, just like you're here as a person, then there's another person, then there's another person, another person, another person, all the way down into a court. It's, it gets like that. But if you just identify this one, you realize Jesus on the cross or the Messiah on the cross, which is everybody, is the being basically sitting there between the divisions of their own hemispheres, the right and the left. And based on all these judgments, they're torn between one side and another. And without going into the ancient times and just find modern facts of what happens when you actually connect the corpus callosum and also the energetic center in the body into the dantain, rather than being trying to be all up here, I'm in the prince, I'm in the royalty. And then you're thinking all the way down there is the hell and everything. That's not even how things are put together in the center is where you want to be, right? So we're talking about center, we're talking about middle. And that has nothing to do with our dualities that we keep facing in the reality about male or female, uh, black or white, penis or vagina, hermaphrodite, uh, per different persuasions, chemicals, all this kind of stuff, that's all distraction. That's why you know the lower realms were made to be very entertaining because just like we talked about before, there are beings that know how valuable, not just the plane, because we're all collectively projecting the plane, but the individual souls or pieces of fruit, the seeds are in this realm. And so that's you, that's your children. So of course, we're going to be again, as a metaphor, walking, because every time we take a step, this is on the back of our brain, we're going to be walking in another direction than where we truly should be going until we do, you know, what I started talking about in the beginning, understand. It looked like some cats had overstood, they overshot it. There was another group, they understood it, they didn't make it. So I said, understand, come back in here because then you're gonna be able to help everyone. You're gonna be, because everything you then create from there is a reflection of you. And this involves actually cleaning this out. That's why I wanna just talk, about, talk on this really quick, that where you're really ruling from, just like I talked about, you, should, you rule from the center. <clears throat> so in our stomach is our kingdom, if you may. Mm -hmm. And all of these different subjects in the kingdom are the microbiome or the bacteria that actually live inside of your gut. So when new stuff is introduced into you and you got the C, you got the CB shirt there. So this is, people should know this now, but they don't take it serious. They go eat a chicken sandwich, man. You, you nuke everybody. You just killed everybody that you were naturally producing. And unlike every, a lot of other things about the body that just regenerate, you actually got to go and reintroduce those bacteria back into your system as far as the ones that are supposed to be in your body, because they're the ones that combat the predators, the, the actual pathogens that are inside of your body. So this is the stuff nightmares are really made out of. So a lot of people, mm -hmm. they have these crazy ass dreams and they're wondering, well, where, where is this coming from? It's coming from the mindset of the bacteria that are inside your body that are also linked with other back, their other friends, the other ones that are on their resonance frequency, they sit in the sewers, they sit in other entities that are, that are filthy, they sit in the trash can, and now you're tied into that. And then when you just let go of the wheel for a moment, sleeping or slipping, when you just let go of the wheel for a moment, all of a sudden they take the wheel. And then you be even in the reality thinking, they talk about in medicine, how these things will have you thinking go and get this sandwich, go and link up with her. They'll even be able to smell the virus on another person and then send an attraction signal. It won't even be something you're interested yeah. in. They'll be like, go and hook up with her because they know they're in the self-preservation. And this is what I mean by, instead of talking about aliens as far as them being external, these are the it's aliens, the ones internal. These are internal. the real aliens because internal the customs- aliens. Wow. 
Yes, because the yeah. customs, look, in a world, you got customs. Forget the external world, it's an illusion, <laughs> but you gotta figure out yes, how exactly. it connects in the inside so it's a really good reflection. The customs is at all holes or ports, okay? At all holes or ports. Because see, the neck, that's why they love to show beings with just no head. Because just with this alone, you can roll through the spiritual plane. You don't need the rest of the body. There's mm. a macrocosm, that's what I was showing here, there's a macrocosm already sitting there that has a liver, a spleen, a kidney, and everything that you would say, except for we call it pineal, ventricle, et cetera. So when, when that being is, 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 gate, is set up to travel, the only, first of all, the way that you're going to take off is if you have good customs. That's why they say in your ancestors tribe and all that, they got culture, which is like a Petri dish where bacteria grows, and customs, which is like things you learn that shape and mold you to be the greatest that you can be. But here's what happens. If you don't have a guard, which we were talking about Saturn being the guard, at your ports, you'll mm. see anything. That means Saturn is wisdom. If you don't have time and wisdom, you'll look at anything and get embedded with all sorts of different pictures that stay stuck in your mind. You'll hear crazy music and crazy lyrics that play early in the morning because you didn't listen to the song over and over again. And now the DJ knows how to mix it up with the frequencies and hers and the tones from what he learned from the societies. And then you got your mouth where you're putting in all this different food, right? And then your smell, like all the different things, the stink and the stench and the perfumes and all this stuff that's unnatural. So this means that you have no guard at your gates. And so they're going to run through you. This is just how it is. I'm just saying on the other side, it's valuable. This money thing didn't come from this realm. This money thing is a cosmic thing. And so that's what I also wanted to get at. Remember a long time ago, thousands and thousands of years ago, still humans were still being sold. Humans were still for sale. Different types of humans were still for sale, but it was more like humans with trades and skills and crafts were being sold to other very, very wealthy royal families. Like, oh, he knows how to woodwork. He plays the liar. She's really beautiful and knows how to dance. And then this, 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 is, this is what was going on in these kingdoms. Again, this is the uncomfortable truth. That's why one of the deepest teachers of our history said, y'all studying too much what was going on in the, in the, in the, in the uh, palaces in the castles, but our people normally wasn't in those palaces and castles. But most of the time though, it was a family member. And this family member knew that there was a great responsibility. These were elders, older people. So they weren't into the megalomania, worship me, I'm the best one. I got the best message out there and all of that. Everybody was trying to work with the original currency, which was unlocking each child's uniqueness because we come from a space that is unlimited. So we can keep producing a uniqueness, a uniqueness, a uniqueness, but it's not unlocked yet. So the elders and everybody else in the tribe had an interest in figuring out every time a new child was born, what is his uniqueness? And the way that they would get them to realize and, and, and experience that was say, the same way that they had learned to experience it. And so through this tutelage of the children, the grandmothers, the grandfathers, and everybody in the tribe, this new being would show you a new gift. And once that new gift was shown, we wouldn't be getting jealous of the person's gift. We would make it a synthesis or a sum total of what the tribe was able to achieve thus far. So what happened was, even if you want to talk about the modern secret society, is one of these guys, just like they show you in Wikipedia, was even invited into what looked like the Aladdin movie that you see Will Smith just recently did, not the old one. They mm -hmm. dance and they rubbing noses. They got a culture <clears throat> going on. And then you got an onlooker that's jealous as hell mm -hmm. because this takes time. This is DNA. You ain't gonna learn how to do the sacred dance and you, you know, be in love and be in joy if your whole kingdom is in war. You see what it means? So it's just like I said before, sometimes we invite, and this is why as above, as so below, sometimes we invite things in our kingdom and we don't even know that they're there to take over. Mm. Think about people invite and put shit in their mouth. I'm not just, this is on all levels. They put things, they're losing the battle within. Your beings, which are the bacteria and all the millions of organisms live inside, like, man, what happened to our God? The same way everybody on the surface on is earth is saying what happened. There, yeah, oh, yo, and it's an infinite. <laughs> yes, and it's an infinite person. So what you can do is be like, yo, I'm sending in. You tap in the Mars side of yourself. Yo, I'm sending in heavy armament. Oh, this is shit. lactose bacillus and all the rest oh, of them. Like shit. we don't, we don't. This is the stuff you need to be knowing. They got a kit called K12 
My guys yeah. are gonna come in and explain next week. It got set. They got twenty or thirty, uh, twenty-one or something like that different friendly bacteria sitting in there, so you can figure out what is the right calculation of the flora and the fauna that you need to restore your system. So there, play God with yourself mm. rather than play continuously God with working. Yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, body, because yeah. that's the that's where you're gonna really feel it. And sure enough, boy, when you get up in the morning, you'd be just as happy. This was in the notes to explain to people where does anger come from? From the gut. That's why the ulcers. You see the bad boys movie, the boss, and, ah, ah, and then he drinks the Pepto Bismol, which is bismuth, yeah. to try to calm down the acids because that's where anger comes from. Even agriculture, meaning the angry culture, killing animals and the animal, and this, and you eat it. Ah, you see, so all of that. And then what happens? Can you think through that? See, what was introduced even like there's an uncomfortable truth. Many of these ancestral groups actually traded on others for the gleam, for the glitz and for the glamour and even sillier stuff like just wine, just just beer, beer, because even for fermentation is the oldest culture in the world. It is ancient. So beer, if you notice how they got uh, they got different names and you can Google them all, different types of alcohols that were given to indigenous people as a form of currency, because they didn't have a form of currency at first. And then this beer becomes a currency. Then it becomes the most person with the most beer has the most money in the tribe, in the ancient tribe. But here's the other thing about beer. You're drunk. So then you start sitting back there all jealous, like, Butu, I think he wants my wife. This is easy when you're drunk. And if, again, this is the trading, you got basically these cheaters out here that know, black, okay, so let, let's, let's stipulate the difference between black, black magic and black magic, okay? Because there's a Russian art that is super dark, shit that you wouldn't even be thinking about doing that is somehow going under the same term. That's why we talk about shorts and negger and they're actually negger and the black, and then Swartz, black means Swartz, pale. And Swartz means black. Exactly, so what, yeah. what are we really referring to? We're referring to basically two different kinds of black in this certain tense, right? Mm -hmm. And what, what I'm basically getting at here is, is that in this form of magic, it's designed to prey on a person's weaknesses, okay? Because the weaknesses are your pleasures, cakes and stuff, things that make you naturally weaker, you feel weak for them, sex, these kind of things. So this particular character, which we just call Saguni, okay, that is the term. They had even tracked this cat down, meaning these arts and crafts that you see coming from things like the uh, laws of power, Sun Tzu. These kind of techniques were also taught in what was known as the priory. It's where the six, the, the third sons went that didn't have an inheritance and also had were mixed breeds, but also were still a part of the, the, the secret societies. They sent them to the priory to actually learn about these crafty ass uh, 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 things so they can go out amongst the world and try to do something that was gonna give them some nobility in the realm. And still, no matter what they did, they never, if they were mixed breed or they weren't the second or first son, could ever inherit anything major. So just imagine on the family level, rather than just trying to be like, oh, wow, yeah, those are the ones I hate. Imagine on a family level, you just get rejected all the way around. You just came into an incarnation where you're the third son. You got sent off to the priory where some basically some pedophilic <laughs> priest is teaching you some dark ass shit. And because of how much they abuse you, you end up going with this because your parents don't care about you anyway because they don't have a culture. Now you're starting to try to figure out how to level up in the kingdom because you don't got no bread. And they're telling you, if you go over there to that area where you're probably gonna lose your life and somehow pull it off, then you'll actually be able to come and sit with your dad again. Mm. That's one scenario. OK, right, right, and right. then likewise, in the deep annuals of its land, it talked about to the to the Mexican people that there was going to be one that came to them on the eclipse. And that was going to be Tupac, basically. That was going to be the one to take them into the next stage of the knowledge. So when Cortez and some others found these works, they presented them to Queen Isabel and Ferdinand and got the money to come over on the eclipse because they could travel by the stars to show up on these cats to fulfill a prophecy falsely because these cats led themselves astray from, in looking outside for something that is within. Because just like I told you before, this is Jesus or the Messiah or the Mashiach. It is in every male and female. See, the thing about the male and female thing, which is another confusion, it's where it all lives at. Because there's a male and female side of the body. 
-hmm. This is the big part of the illusion. The re this is why they want to play with the LGBTQ and all this kind of stuff to just hide the obvious that the inside of the entire body is hermaphroditic. It needs a lunar and a solar pole in order to generate. So just because in the illusion you came out partialized with one of your hands, using one of your hands more than another, thinking that you're unbalanced, thinking you're actually what you're in, as they tell you, you're not the body, but really thinking you're a male when really you're what's behind a male's eyes, okay? Look at this. If this is a male or a female, okay, is this a man or a woman? Is this a human man or a human woman? No, this is a, if this is a male, we'll say that it's behind the eyes when we say what is masculine, we're not talking about just human beings. So when you actually tap into, well, what is the universal masculine and what is the universal feminine, then you start turning this stuff on. And when mm. this stuff goes on, because there's no conflict, as long as these two are like, yo, I think it's not, yo, I think it's dead, I think it's black people, black people came first, white people came first, yellow people came first, I don't care, I want a burger, I don't want to eat burgers, I want to eat, I want to eat vegetables, vegetables are good, vegetables are good for you, I don't, and this, as long as that's going on with these two, this, in the center, this burns out, it's called the corpus callosum, this is like a cognate of the bridge in itself that connects both worlds, the referee, okay, black and white, Remember the black and white is the referee. So it's the mediator. Mm. This is why you are supposed to be the mediator, the governor of your body, because you're gonna have one part saying one thing, another part saying another thing, but what you have to decide based on the knowledge and the wisdom that the ancestors gave us is what exactly is, what, are, what, is, what is that saying? And if your gut is crazy, and that's why I just wanna center in on this right now, because it's come to us in the tribe, We've already had a lot of research, especially in the past with the cleansing, but it's drilling in even deeper that you will win this war completely if you go inside of your gut, put your microbiome back together, mm -hmm. and then they will defeat the intruders. This is the stuff of nightmares. Literally, when you get one of these things under the microscope, if I pan over here, you'll see microscopes all over the place. This is not face value. I don't read books to go and get this. I like, let's go get him. Now, how are you supposed to be getting him there? I'll Google it. They say, yeah, you just need to put this right there and then put it on the slide and take a look. So I put this right there, go take it on the slide, take a look, oh, damn. And then you go try to identify him. Oh man, that's the bad one for sure. Mm -hmm. So this is proof, clear proofs. But mm -hmm. once again, if I'm running all out there and I'm on some other stuff, whatever they can keep feeding me, that's why they wrote so many books. Even somebody go and get the bridge to the light, it's a waste of time. They got 1500 books. And I've read pretty much all of them to see that they're all pretty much a waste of time. They're there to crisscross the knowledge because literally if you see how this, what this consists of inside of your brain, you notice how one side of your brain covers this arm and then this side of the brain it starts getting confusing. The left side of the brain covers the right arm and then the left side of the body. So you see there's, a, there's basically what they call the serpent energy or which is energetic center just twining of the body. So what crisscross is, is what if they made your, what if they just cross your circuits real quick? The easiest way to cross someone's circuits is basically to make them fight themselves. Fight yourself. <laughs> and because we're everything, you can get where this goes. And you can also get some of the biggest things that are perpetuated every single day for us to continuously age, uh, basically age, that's where age comes from, this kind of division, and then destroy because through this thing that we can't solve and this disconnection that we have, we destroy ourselves internally and thus eternally. So, you know, that's what it is. Indeed. Um, I've heard you on past tapes say flat, well, not on, on one uh, lecture in particular, I was watching, um, you know, um you some of your lectures before the interview and you said flat earth is a psyops yeah explain what you mean by that yeah because it's just like you don't even really use or drop the terms anymore jesus or messiah because those terms are already like trademarks now that have been taken over by other forms of consciousness okay and likewise there's a law to these projections which it talks about in the kaibagan which is that when a lot of people begin to believe something that's what it becomes because it's all wet work anyway meaning that basically our minds and global consciousness and cosmic consciousness control the spaces that we're in so when they said new world order which happened a long time ago that did start with how people visualize the world looked in their minds because that's 
that's where you would start. And then thus the dream was built, meaning that model that you see of the the spheric world and how things are actually positioned, which is the Cadman, is a real model of the realms that people are in now. So <laughs> a lot of times with this flat earth knowledge, there's the omissions to of letting people understand that that is basically a dream world. And until you know how to navigate that world, you would never get, so what is what would be the point if I figure out that it's flat and that they're really tricking me and all this shit that you accept. No, this is always the same thing. I'm gonna accept that everything is the enemy. Everything is out to kill me. And then where are you left at? Which broke, broke, literally not having any current. Mm. Current is the currency flow, like being able to actually move around. Now you're stuck. Everybody is the enemy. You go to the store, all these stupid people. You go into the bank, this bank, and but how does this feel when you're feeding your kids with it? How does this feel if you haven't put yourself in a condition to build the solutions? That's what we do over here now. We build the solution. We realize that, shoot, once the smoke cleared, the reason why people were choosing most of this stuff is because they didn't have any options. There was no well-oiled machine, if you may, that was robust enough to push what was needed to the people the same way these corporations that everybody is working for is pushing it to the people, but doing something for them. And then like the times of the oppression, the times of the destructions and all of that are, they happen, but it appears to me that a lot of them are over. Not all of them, but not all of them, but a lot of them. So since I can take a breath and that's what I feel like is, is a gift. If I can even move, if I can, mm. knowing what my ancestors went through, if I can even like halfway put something together, I'm going to do it. Because when was the last time we got a chance to actually talk about this knowledge casually and be able to start putting things back together for ourselves and what happened? It hasn't been in a while. So somebody needs to activate the highest level of this. Because uh, do you see any of these people really headlong and complaining and division really activated with powers? Like they talk about the real powers of the Cetus. There is still YouTube videos, guys like Dynamo Jack, Qigong Masters, light shit on fire with their hand. Do you see people really in these communities that be on this whole disconnect thing, distributing those kind of energies and powers? No, because- well, what, what, uh, Let me answer that. Uh, let mm -hmm. me, people may feel, people in that I know may feel that people that look like me or you may not be accepted into those uh, schools of thoughts. So they may not verbalize it or they may not be emotional. Like we see, uh, you know, people in, in, in America being emotional, but those people in, in Asia or whatever, people feel like they just know, okay, you're not accepted in this school of thought. So, okay. Well, I actually, but the thing is, is that the college is invisible. The school is within. The universe is the teacher. Like over there, whether they can teach it or not, it still is a certain part that you have to go on by yourself. What I'm referring to directly is, is that when you allow yourself to even start immersing your, your own self, not even going over there trying to be a part of that school, that's what I stand for. Like, to be honest, people who have followed this for the last 10 years, if they know anything about me, I, I throw everything under the bus that is related to those organizations every moment that I get. But I also make sure we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I take, this is my stuff. You stole my signet ring, my right. knowledge, right. But my what tribe. I, what I'm saying is people may feel like those people that know how to do that, they know how to do that and discriminate at the same time. So it's not one or the other. They could. They have those powers, but they also know how to discriminate at the same time. Regardless of what me and you, we know what our objective is, but they know how to do all of that and discriminate at the same time. You know, th to be honest, what I always do is I like to go specifically to who we're talking about. Yes. Because I've noticed that there are many that actually say they have the power and they do not. Mm. While there's also those who have the power that say really nothing because that's how the power actually is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it doesn't mm -hmm. actually promote that you go and it, it's not, it's all internal. So the last thing you want to do is kind of get involved in a whole nother being's path and problems. And cause you can see all of that. You really are trying to repair yourself. And so there's a lot of workers that are actually on the planet dealing with the deep healings, but also that have abilities 
And I don't think it's necessary the Dalai Lama's in that whole group. Where's the Dalai Lama now? You mm-hmm. see what I mean? I think that these are the organizations, the brotherhoods that have actually been the usurpers of, of this knowledge for a prolonged period of time. And I've very, been very clear about that. But I also know just like if you see Dynamo Jack, because you got to be excellent, ju- excellent judgment of character also. Like mm-hmm. I, I know behavioral science, so I can watch a person and how they're moving, how they're holding themselves. And that was something that I learned on my own spare time, nothing I went to college for. Right. So because of that, I can watch a person and tell you if they're telling the truth, just like anybody that's really proficient at even street knowledge can look at somebody and know if they're telling the truth. So with that and being able to watch videos of masters like and I'm just bringing up Dynamo Jack here as an example, because that's one of the only videos that you have on the Internet of somebody showing you the power that you have. If you're just the fly on the wall and listening to what he's saying, he's saying because he's able to unite the energy from up here down here. And that is the training because then it lights the whole body up. It actually gets you into a whole nother level. But if you notice his demeanor, his demeanor is not like, oh, I'm the master and I don't wanna teach you this and all this kind of stuff. He's actually quite the contrary, even kind of risking his own meditations to come out here and explain to you what you can do. So Mm -hmm. those are kind of the real people in my world. And then there's all these gatekeepers, you know, that were never able to accomplish it in the first place because you can't accomplish it with having spite. You can't accomplish it with having greed, separation. You can't treat the woman as a divine feminine a certain way and expect to get it. You can't, none of that is allowed. And that's going to be the test that comes to to a person and to a being. You see what I mean? So that's how, that's what I've had in my experience as far as who really had the knowledge. And what does happen though, is, is that there's a huge gap in communication, to be honest. Like when you see these people, it's like communicating with your great granddad. You know how sometimes because of the vernacular that we use, we can actually say something that is so offensive to how they see everything. And we don't even know that that's what we said. We was kind of having a standard conversation is because they have customs. So Mm. what was needed and what is still needed is bridges, Mm. bridges, Mm -hmm. people that know how to connect in with people or, or even forces in nature, et cetera, that have a level of knowledge and wisdom about healing and what we can do about this that also are able to come into this just like I am right now and really be able to do the best at trying to cross over the knowledge into this. And you see what I mean? And also get people onto, instead of information, information, information all the time, because this is, this is another thing, because if I make a great YouTube video right now, we do a good job right on this, or let's just say there's a couple jewels in here. Somebody mm-hmm. else is going to pick up on those jewels and then they'll go to their show and they'll start saying that. And it'll be the next person's, it'll be the people that are listening to them that also heard that for the first time. So it'll blow their mind. So they'll keep doing that. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, what did we build though? And this is where I'm checking everybody at. This is the real deal. This is the real get down or lay down that's going to be happening here in just a moment. Mm-hmm. Why as either men or women or YouTubers or whatever that we've all been talking about, whether it's Trump or Kemet or whatever, what are we building? Because first of all, if you build it, they'll come. I'll be positive about it. But truthfully, the reason why we don't have a curriculum for homeschool that actually teaches systems, like we have this ideology system that tells the person everything about themselves, but this system wasn't something we created. It's all been here for thousands of years. Or, or, or uh, actual forms of unlocking the uniqueness, forms of actually creating in a person what they need to have to sustain themselves. Those kind of things with all of this technology and all of this pay-per-click and AI and all this stuff, you telling me not one person snapped out of their opiate? Because <laughs> the religion is the opiate. <laughs> snapped out of their casual opiate of, of reptilians and all this stuff to say, yeah, but if we're all talking about it, <laughs> who is building it until we finally get to the point because we didn't build anything like Hans like I always call them Hans, like the Germans, they build, like they create all sorts of stuff. And then we sit here and get mad and, and then we ain't building nothing because we sitting over here mad. Meanwhile, we got the whole thing. It's like the Solomon Islands, right? Solomon Islands, the first crown colony to start going other, under. So you got all these brothers out there and now they starting to fight and they starting to steal from each other. But they're sitting on the world's largest reserve of the most precious wood, all these mines of gold and power and uranium and iridium. But what's happened is, is they've gotten so used to somebody else basically putting it on the shelf for them. They walk through the store and it's there. And that's the laziness that's happened. Like we're not asking no more, how is our body even put together? How is this microwave even put together? So of course in the grand system, 
there's going to be these things that start urging you, yo, you better figure that out. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. you better get sovereign. 2020 is going to be crazy. You know, it is, it's going to be the currencies they're flipping. You better figure out what to do. But instead of us like, again, panicking and going through that, because I know there's going to be millions and billions that are going to go into that because they didn't prepare. I'm sitting over here with tribe and we're saying, based on everything we have as our skills, can we create something that actually can meet this thing head on, a quantum solution? Because there's intelligent brothers and sisters that are around us. Like not everybody is sitting there with a psychological problem because they're hot, been high on some kind of drug and now they can't function anymore and integrate back with society. Some of us was already running everything that we were doing, serial entrepreneurs and had lapped the entire game until, you know, at a certain point we just, there was nothing to do but come back to self. So that doesn't have to be everybody's experience. But I'm just saying here, like all of this stuff that we're seeing right now that we're complaining about in this moment in time, in this level of awakening is because we haven't actually rallied ourselves personally to this cause. And that could become that could come from us not understanding completely what it is that could come from listening to bad mentors self-centered people, e egalomaniac service to self kind of people that still have character flaws from them not even being loved when they were a child. Also people who are not tapped into the divine feminine aspect of themselves so they don't understand nature and how to regenerate themselves and that nature does not need anybody's help. Like you're some kind of hero trying to save some dame in the woods. You know, so all of the programs that we've loaded we have a choice to unload these programs if we want to get to the next side because of this one thing, Brother Rich, this one thing. You know how, like, if you really want to travel, you definitely don't want to pack a lot of bags. Mm -hmm. Like, because, you know, your, your luggage will get lost and they'll break stuff. So you try to travel as light as possible. This is a cosmic rule. You want to basically be able to put yourself as small as what you were when you first came into the womb, okay? Because mm -hmm. on the real metaphysical level, the only exit here is basically a, a cosmic vagina. But the mm -hmm. head crack is, is that you have to actually be small enough to actually fit back through it again, or else you're too large to actually get pushed through, just like a baby. A baby is a baby. He's not in there with the beard, long legs. No, it's a baby. So mm -hmm. be able to get through. So this is what we have as far as when we put a lot of weight on ourselves and a lot of depression and a lot of negativity and a lot of greed and all of those different things, all of that makes us bigger and bigger. And what was told to me was, is that you're trying to get light, but you need to get light. You got too much weight, so you're gonna wait. And this is a riddle that's basically saying that if you have all of this division and all this stuff going on, you can't fit into the next space of where you really want to go. And then when you let all of that loose and that happens with cleansing your body, you're not going to be able to do this in your mind. A lot of people don't be trying to like philosophy your way into this. The mind is overrun with bacteria. The easiest way to hit it, to nuke it. And that's how you'll see how difficult it is at first. It's like, let's just go on a simple colon cleanse. Let's remove the Similac with iron because even some of the Similac with iron for a 30 year old is still sitting on the wall of their colon. Mm -hmm. So it's like, then when your colon is clean, at least one layer, it starts vibrating, ringing. Your colon is like your root, is your root chakra. And when this starts vibrating because the power that's with it, which you can even feel as you're passing out this fecal matter when it comes online, it starts turning the other wheels because it's like a clock. So now the big motor, which is the root chakra, the one sitting in the center, now that's starting to come online and then it starts jumping off the rest of the body. And then you get the experiences. What happens is, is your consciousness literally starts dialing in, just like you were saying before, like we're dialing in our experience. The chakras, which are like lenses, begin to dial in the experience and start sending out the resonance of the situations that are going to need to happen to us next in order for us to actually begin to unlock the vehicle more. Mm -hmm. So I never seen nobody in this last 10 years, Brother Rich, that really wanted to do that. Really? Not lying, not playing, but really wanted to do that. That didn't get some assistance. This assistance came from every, anywhere. I don't care if they didn't have no money. I don't care what the story was. I got living folks, tribe, that they just made the decision in their mind 
and they were real about it because that's the whole thing about a curated life with socialism and social media. If you, you can't be real anymore, that's why we got to dig deeper into the code. But the reality is, is the moment that a person taps into their realness and, and locks into that, then they get the invitation for them to start leveling up. Indeed. I, I want you to touch on um, something you said. I forgot exactly what it was, but it made me think about something going on currently with mm -hmm. um, the Bahamas. Um, yeah. What's going on with the Bahamas and the Bermuda Triangle and that whole area? We hear so much about the B Bermuda Triangle in the Bahamas. So, uh, we, you know, uh, Leah's plane crash and planes missing and ships missing and this and that. W what's up with that whole area spiritually, uh, Seven? Right, there's a lot of stuff under the water. Um, most, a lot of the beings that are referred to, especially mythically on the surface, actually live in the ocean. And if you really think about it, and that's, this is just how knowledge works. We think that somebody would publish on the news or in some open media or YouTube or something when they find out some kind of knowledge that we all didn't know. <laughs> but that's what we're doing right now. And you see your views? There are 9 billion people in the world. That is such a small fraction. Even if everyone told everyone, it would still stay in a specific bubble. Mm -hmm. So I bring that up because that ocean you can't go to somebody and say, so uh, did you discover already that there was nobody in there? <laughs> <laughs> this is the most undiscovered place. And that's for a reason. There's a lot of treaties and things about whether you're able to access what's truly in there and, and whether you're able to actually get into those spaces that are in themselves. Like if you can imagine that, okay. When there's a child born, the child comes from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Not the outside in, right? Mm -hmm. So as you get deeper into the ocean, what, where do you think that you're actually getting to? Where, where would you be getting to? You would be getting to the opening. Yeah. Okay. Out. So it wouldn't be out there because that's like going outside of yourself. That's why it's good to have these metaphysical, you know, metaphors, yeah. because the further you get outside of yourself, the more you divide and then you get lost. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people lost right now. Mm -hmm. But the more you get into yourself, you start finding yourself. This is common, right? So we know then that the direction we should be going is like this, because that's the Taurus field. It could either be moving like this, or it could be moving like this. Now there's uses for this, but if it's always going like this, then everything's always going out. So you're going outside to try to find what, when the field does this, you know, you figure out within. So mm. now, since that exists on all levels, inside of the ocean are the gates. They are the wombs. They are the portals. The sky is only a mirror of what is going on in the ocean. It's like a, it's like a, refraction, a, a refraction trick. This is why the ancestors always referred to the, to the ocean as being the stars. And then those forms that you're seeing, those lights that you're seeing, the ones that are real, not the artificial ones, but the ones that you're seeing, the lights, are actually those that are in the deep. Okay? Because when you're large, and this is why you find an undercurrent of the Kathan, which is a, a, a awareness that there are squids even with large brains. Like humans is like, it, it's, it's crazy. This idea that we're here by ourselves and the most intelligent, it's just, it's gone too far. And, but it's all part of the game because it's a lack of being aware that there is other intelligence out there. And those other intelligence are, are actually moving through what we would call space. And there is a current. This is why you can, your nautical current, like when you're sailing a ship, matches directly onto the stars. You know how to sail with a sextant because you actually can map what's going on with the currents in the oceans with the stars. Mm -hmm. So this lets you know that our, what our ancestors, which are known as those from the boat, what our ancestors had us tapped into was, or what was the knowledge was how to navigate into this space by basically sailing by following the current of what comes through. That's what I say, like a 360 degree pantheon that on the celestial boat, we're gonna visit everybody. So it doesn't, if you're trying to get there early, none of that even makes any sense. You get on the boat, we'll go 360 degrees around the sphere. And in that 360 degrees, we'll experience every single aspect of life, we'll visit everybody. And we'll do this with current. 
which mm. is not motive, which is like motivation. You'll do this with, there, there are master sailors that know how to ride across the entire world mm -hmm. with no motor mm -hmm. <laughs> because they're using the current. So this is a metaphor of also how you're supposed to be in life. You're supposed to be able to tap into this cosmic force that keeps you going on. It's like a, it's like a caravan. That's the easiest way I can explain it. But you experience this in your regular, what you would say is your regular life, but it becomes a, a caravan of like, okay, I, I know that's Mars. All right, we definitely in Venus time. Yo, what's up, Mercury? Because these are also archetypical metaphors for specific energies that we roll through as we're going through this cosmos. And so, you know, this is, this is something that of how we have to look at what's going on. Sometimes it's like, look over there. And really what we're looking for is kind of like common sense also to get the answer of what's there. But why are we not invited into the deep? Because you got to go in here. You use a whole different vessel. This is what the Bishop Kanko and the witch doctor and where the guy confessed about what was going on with the Saturnalian brotherhoods in Africa and how the natures of the body and the spirit work together, which is what you gander from just what's being written there. You got to put the rest together. But it basically says that when we travel to go into the ocean, we don't use our physical bodies, duh, obviously. However, if we were to leave completely from our body, our body cannot keep hot because that's what the spirit is for. It keeps it hot. So uh, what we would say is an angel, which is a placeholder, would come into the body, keep the body warm, and then you would go out of the body and then be escorted into the ocean where you would take counsel with the beings that have been there Forever, what you can say is forever, they've been in there and regulating things, even the stuff that you actually see on the surface. So yes, you got areas where it's like, yo, it's hands off, you can't even come over here. And then you have these magnetic fields. You also have technology that has been destroyed. You see mm -hmm. that in the Bhagavad's and in the Upanishads, the Vimanas, et cetera, you see there's wars popping off when especially the larger beings are get into their conflicts, like what we're experiencing right now. But the technologies are the temples. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the technology temples is a code for the technology of the ship. This is why also this is a ship. So it was at first, once we figured this one out, then we start trying to build external ones and see how those would work. And that generally was you would create something like a, let's say one of those temples at Angkor Wat, you would, what's also what underneath the pyramid, you would create something like that. And then people from all around could actually come in this and connect with the great as the aspects of themselves. You see what I mean? By there have been an external, that's why there's always these bell shapes, there's cymatics on the roof. Look at Buddy from Phenomenal, Phenomenal Travel Videos. He's going into South India, which is where the Tamil lived. That is their original language, right, before Sanskrit. And these are the people that are now at the bottom of the caste system. And he's in these temples that they didn't forgot about, like, covering all that stuff up, like they did the serpent mounds and all that stuff in now Morocco or America. America. They've still got the temple exposed and showing you this language is still on the wall and a cymatic is up on the ceiling and this whole thing is soaked in water. What do you think this does when it's actually online? It, it's another form of portal jumping and all this, but what are portals? Instead of us thinking, oh, this is Captain Kirk <laughs> and he's going into mm -hmm. other worlds because we're so external. No, it's creating life. Portals are the, the sexual organ, if you may, of the female. So when you go in, you come back out half <laughs> wherever you just went in there and yourself what you were before you went in there. It's an mm. initiation, okay. right? Okay. So you walk in there, you're in another realm now, all those different experiences start <clears throat> layering you. This is what's happening here on earth because you asked me to explain earth. They start mm. laying, layering you and you start becoming aware of things and then you come out. <laughs> back wow. out the womb now you got to get birth because it's like nine months now you're too big <laughs> you get too big that's why that's why you got to mass when you amass knowledge and then synthesize it you become what we call metaphysically big mm. and then once you get to that nine month gestation the universe will be like he's good he's already gone through the university he's definitely passed all of his tests mm. he's getting it and he's also not in division because see if you bring division out there division is a virus mm. So it starts okay. affecting, it's like somebody want to come gossip with you. It's like, it starts to infect every single thing. And now we got 
what's over there over here. And that's not the whole goal. There's no interest in bringing division outside of this realm. But I'm telling you, division is not your enemy. As a seed, division is necessary just like a smaller portion of a meal would be necessary for you until you could take the big dose. Mm-hmm. And this is measured in degrees. This is where they got this whole knowledge of the, this, this word degrees from. It's a reference to how much energy you can take. Degrees measures fire and temperatures. Degrees measures knowledge. So when you're like a one degree, this means you're just beginning. And as the degrees begin to fill you, the degrees of the spirit, the wisdom, how much you can handle, because let's say a person gets too much wisdom, what do they become? A megalomaniac. They start thinking they're the only God. Hello, Akhenaten. They start separating (laughs) from everybody. They start acting like they want to desecrate their own mother, which is, I don't care what your mother does. You always got to take care of her. That is the law. There's That's the rule. You see what I mean? Because that is the portal we all got to come out of. And on top of that, protecting our sisters, protecting the divine feminine when we're locking into that divine masculine aspect of ourselves. Because, hey, if I got here through this ship and I don't actually know any more ships, now you could be here long enough where you can find more more portals if that's your thing. But if you only have one portal to begin with and you're not nurturing that one, you can't expect to come back out across the portal and had gained some girth. You just killed what it is that gives you life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is a very, very tricky game where a lot it's high stakes and -hmm. it's got to be a high stakes time based game for us to even get into it. But then when you really look at yourself as intelligent you really are and as intelligent as your your ancestors are, you mm-hmm. can see how, yeah, they cooked up something like this. <laughs> yeah, because I can, I could even fathom this and, be, and, and anything that you can fathom, especially within the English code, because it's coming completely expo- explored, anything you can fathom, is there is a realm running where it happened. And that's why it's important for us like to understand, like some people talk about this Mandela effect and these kind of things where you basically shift realities so fast. It's a twinkling of an eye. You don't even know that you're actually not in the same world before. It's called, that you were in before. It's called sliding. It's just like you woke up from a dream, and I've had dreams like this before, where I wake up in a dream, right? Mm, And I'm good. Like, I got a name. I got all sorts of stuff. That's why dreams don't start from the beginning. So I got a name. I got all this stuff. And I'm just assuming life is going on. I had one dream that was so close. I was even asking mom. I was like, I told, I said, mom, remember I told you that I thought that you could actually go to the future. I kid you not. I'm in the future right now. And she said, boy, shut up and play your instrument. So this was all like, and we got in the car. We were riding down a freeway. And I was like, damn, I wonder if I'm going to be able to get back to that world. Back to that world. And at a certain point, boom. I end up here. And when I opened up my eyes, I saw all this stuff moving around. I later on learned that that's your chakras. While your third eye is open, you can actually see your chakras moving and actually creating those fields and spaces. And then all of a sudden it coils back into this one moment. And I was like, I wrote it in my diary. I've jumped for the first time. I've jumped. It's real. I had no connection to my body here. I could not feel my body at all. I was in another world. I had a name. My mother was there, but things, certain things were different. Like on the freeway, they were tra- some of the people were, had a lane that water just ran down and they were like surfing down that lane. So they were like, so you either had this kind of car, we had like a caravan kind of car we were in, or you surfed down the lane. So there was just some slight differences and changes in the world, but it was real. So just imagine then that you get into one, and this is how powerful your consciousness is, especially as you begin raising the vibration and actually putting yourself into the best thing that you can ever receive. In your meaning, like start thinking about the best thing that can, you could ever receive in this. And this is, of course, why you realize why they want to keep you locked into the doomsday and the prison and all this stuff, because it, the energies are going so high where even people like me talking about this kind of stuff, inciting others to talk about it, it starts raising the frequencies of manifestations. But if you're locked into this dismal world where you're a victim and all the seven deadlies are being played out on you and you're now dogmatically locked into religion and skin suits based on colors from a prism, 
then you can't expect for it. <laughs> that is never the equation. That's like me putting you in the kitchen with a certain ingredient and expecting that out of those ingredients, you're going to be able to make me something that tastes good. Those are not the ingredients that make something that tastes good. So thus, we've been eating nothing, filth. You see what I mean? And now this, this, this awareness has come and it's like, Let's just do something with it then and for trying to figure out where it keeps coming from. <laughs> Indeed. I want to ask you, um, in one of your lectures I've seen, um, uh, Seven, you talked about, you said the melanated people of the planet had as custodial purposes to manage the spirit world. Could yeah. you uh, go in on that and talk a little bit about that? Absolutely, because see, that's a factor of melanin because see what melanin is, is that that's the crocodile, okay? Like in the ancient tribes, they tell you that there are beings that are actually more designed to deal with, okay, so how the kingdoms are divided is there's two kingdoms from the navel, from the navel down and the navel up, okay? So there are those who have governance over the lower kingdoms and those who have governance over the higher kingdoms. What this means is, can you walk over to that side of town where it's gully gully? That's even where Venus is, black magic. Can you go over there and those are your folks and those are your friends and they even like, you even tell, they tell you about how they aspire to do great things. They give you stuff to actually accomplish. Can you go over there and that happens? Or when you go over there, do you get beat up? Mm. Okay, so what this is really about is, is just like you got Sunni and Shia, there are those that are designed to communicate with the what would be from the navel up. You can say the higher beings, they speak that language, right? And then you have those that can communicate from the navel down. Now, if you ask these two, who was the more powerful, they would keep you in on a, like an everlasting session. <laughs> it's like a movie watching two wrestlers that have equal strength trying to tackle each other because the only one who has ultimate power is the one that's in the center. <laughs> so when you move to the center of your, con your consciousness, obviously you can stand in that level of awareness and you can actually see all of this. But you know, this is where this, this knowledge comes from about, yeah, I mean, what you're, what you're talking about. Indeed, wow. Um, let's talk about um, our body and the illusion of, of we think we're just this little tiny human being but from what i'm reading i'm listening to joe Dispenza, and i'm reading books and they're saying that uh our dna each strand of dna they're saying is two meters long which is six feet long so they're mm -hmm. saying that our dna stretched out can wrap around the earth at least two three times that's some hell of a shit to imagine. When we look at ourselves and we think uh, what's, in, what's inside of my body could wrap around the earth two times, that's a, that, that seems like it's a stretch of the imagination. It, it can't possibly be true. Talk to me about this idea of a, because you know, um, just like you know, if, if you're black and your hair, and your hair spirals and it's coils and, 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 and you stretch your hair, that shit could go from being real tiny to it could go real high. And you'd be like, God yeah, damn, I, I ain't got that going on right now. Yeah. This thing go way up there, but I got them, I got them pressed down. Yeah. So that's the <laughs> fractal of the universe. Yeah, that's the fractal that 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 they talked about. But um yeah. our, is our DNA. Then and that's why they say when they say as above, so below, they're saying that's it's literally, it's not just figuratively, literally, our DNA is encompasses the whole universe because it stretches around the, the earth two times. Talk to me about our DNA and what we may or may not know about our DNA and junk DNA, um, Seven. Okay, so just to clarify, the DNA just directly is the memory. It's actually the component that is used to store the experiences, okay? So when we even say junk DNA, what we're saying is experiences that we are currently locked out of, but if we unlock those experiences, like if we go down those corridors and we drive energy down those corridors to activate those telomeres to connect, especially when there's no division, when there's no monster, you know what I mean? Once you make that connection, you begin to travel down what has been recording, just like the DNA right now, it's just continuously recording. When you see it, it just continuously 
eats and basically it doesn't care what experiences you're having. It can benefit from all the experiences because it's laying all of that out as the tube, if you may, that everything is traveling through. So it is, it's actually bigger than the external aspect of trying to measure it with man's tools. This is actually something that is, <laughs> it's, it's beyond nano size, if you even understand the, the size of the DNA, that is the coding system that is keeping all the memories. The, the most important thing to understand about it is how, how do you access different parts of it or how are you able to travel through it? Because just like a record, if you notice that, if you look at a record, you'll notice that there's certain lines that actually are thicker. And when you go to that <clears throat> part in the record, it's because there's more playing at that point, right? Mm -hmm. This is also what John Quick or Jim Quick uh, talks about the memory that when you have these very emotional moments, those you remember, that's why they try to teach you how to attach things you need to remember to something emotional. That's why also in marketing, they teach to tug on the person's emotions if you want them to remember the brand. So because of this, you have a life that is full of like something that is going, let's say like this, right? Mm -hmm. And then at some point when you have what you would say is a traumatic event, you have a spike, okay? Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking at the DNA and then you, you're, and, and, and you're able to read where these spikes actually are. So when you're going into the dream or more importantly, when you're going through what they would call the death process, you see this code in front of you but only the spikes. It's like you don't pay attention to the small stuff. You pay attention to the big points where something happens. And this is what gives us the ability to quote unquote time travel because we will then reinsert ourselves because we have strong intentions and the memory string belongs to us so we can actually go back into it. So we'll go where we ha we'll go back where we had these strong points and we'll try to actually change things to get a different result. Now, if I'm sitting on this side, this feels like deja vu. There becomes this moment where I feel like something is going on that I need to maybe be aware of what's happening. Maybe go left instead of right. That's really what's happening. It's a moment that has already occurred within your, well, okay, this is where I want to clarify. When I say yours, I'm really talking about, it could be your mom, your mother's mother, her mother's mother, and the rest of the lineage of the DNA. When it happened for them, this is technically your first time here. And some will just, mm. you know, have a hissy fit about this, but it makes obvious sense. Any recollection of you being here before is yeah and no. It's a recollection of someone or something that has your DNA string, your code, your resonance code that actually went through experiences. And because through that process of going through the portal, now here it is that you have it now, you're able to even recollect, feel, tap in to those memories. But as far as you specifically being here, that's not what's happened. This is, this is your first time because each of these realms are very unique. And so in this experience, armed with all the DNA of your ancestors, which I gave thanks to when we started the conversation and their experiences, you're supposed to make the best probable and quantum decisions about how you're going to consistently exist eternally without falling back to sleep, without going below the speed of light or actually getting into where you have negative entropy. This means that like what they say, the planet that you start slowing down. So you start wobbling. And evidence of this slowdown is you primarily using one hand rather than both hands. You coming out as a male or a female rather than an androgynous. You being so confused about everything and what its true existence is that you actually think that it's different. That's what happens when the vibratory field is slowed down or has been slowed down. But of course, things start off just like base in the low vibratory field. Earth is on a 7.83 hertz. That's like base. That's not the high pitch frequency sounds that you like to listen to on your chakra alignment radio stations or whatever. Why? Because if a seed was trying to grow in that frequency on the earth, it would be so agitated. The ground would be shaking all the time. There wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a space for the beings that need that level of density to plant themselves in to even grow. So every time you're starting to look at the fertilizer, whatever it is that you got as your antithesis or nemesis for today, which is the fertilizer, you need mm -hmm. to understand that those are the things that are producing the eclectic results and the mineralization of your existence and growth. More importantly, it's making you aware of your gifts because you had all of your gifts. 
Just like a child, your parents gave you all of your gifts, but you don't know what they do. You don't know where they came from. You were born into a house of ultimate wealth, but you didn't know what it was to be poor. So this doesn't have a use for you. So instead of letting you continue to roll out in this ignorance with your parents taking everything, for, uh, taking care of everything for you, they put you into a module because of their love for you to actually unlock these powers and really use them to overcome this fake ass Illuminati, this fake ass intelligentsia. They keep naming themselves, they steal signet rings. So they're gonna name themselves at the end of the day, every single name of your ancestors before they're done with you. <laughs> You mm -hmm. see what I mean? And completely usurp you from all your tools of power and say that they're theirs, like the Masonic square and a compass to measure the earth, to measure the sky. So if that all of a sudden becomes theirs, that metaphorically is saying that to measure the earth and to measure the sky is the knowledge that they only hold. OK, mm -hmm. and, and this is interesting because it might take us down a path that lets us understand also in the sun temples, like I said before, that this knowledge was exposed. And we have to understand that not every single being that has come in as the ruler over a group of people has been the greatest ruler and greatest leader. We see that happening up until this very moment. Leaders of the family, your father may not have been the greatest father. So why do we put such a burden on the ancestors like they're supposed to be perfect in an imperfect space? So once you actually put that into calibration, you realize this is a work in progress. <laughs> and I better return to myself. You better break up young Ram. That's what this is called in all of the traditions that this is a superior brachium that's also known as young Ram. Mm -hmm. When young Ram wakes up to the level of conscious, uh, as you wake up to this next level of consciousness, there it goes. Do you see those horns on the head? That's why they got everybody so scared of the horn god, the Minotaur, M yeah. M Moloch, the horn god. It's because the ancestors, many of them, they were likened unto the calf or the cow, like to the Taurus. Mm -hmm. And the first form of currency, that's why I always tell you, follow the money. If you want to know who the god is, Follow the money. The money then was oxen, bovids, aurochs, cows. That was the current. That's how people moved around. But it was deeper than that. That's why we call it the uncomfortable history is where the animals come from. Right, right. And did like they say about the fallen angels or the Anak, did they go into the children of men? Men is a reference to flesh. It's not a reference to a male. This is this is another word game. Sun in the sky. Sun is a is a dynamo. So it has three poles. So it's not a boy. <laughs> you see what I mean? But when you start playing these these word games, that's our program. So that yeah. program that that we're using, if those little codes are not put into the right place, and again, you're taught to hate what you are. That's the only way that replicates within the culture and replicates within everything that's around us, right? So yeah, yeah, Indeed. that's you know, and and to continue the conversation on this whole reality creation process, I mean, that's what ultimately what everybody wants to do in Absolutely. this realm, this holographic realm, is create the reality that they desire. And if you know, I'm, I'm let's say I'm I'm, I'm seeking the light. And I, and I go to somebody who's a spiritual teacher and I say, you know, I love music. Tell me what I could listen to, to in order to manifest my reality. They would tell me, listen, stay away from that mother effing hip hop. That shit there is, is, is not going to get you where you need to go. That hip hop is the de degenerate. Black, white, whoever would tell you that. Well, yeah, they're, they're, what, 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 let, me, let me finish this seven. But mm -hmm. what I find is that we got somebody like Michael Phelps, the Olympic, the all time winner of gold medals in the Olympics. He's sitting there. I think this was in 2015. Has on his headphones, wireless headphones, zoned out. He's about to, he's about to swim, do his thing, zoned out. After he wins all the gold medals, they say, Michael Phelps, what was you listening to? Hmm. He says, I was listening to Future. At yeah. that time, Future had Dirty Sprite 2 out. What was on Dirty Sprite 2? I just fucked these bitches in my, and some Nike flip and some Gucci flip flops. I had them lip locked, some shit like some, de I mean, degenerate shit, degenerate lyrics. Yeah. Crazy shit. 
But this yeah. is what Michael Phelps was listening to before he went on to become the greatest swimmer of all time. So we have our people telling us, don't listen to certain hip hop because it's horrible for us. It, it, it is ruining our youth, but we have an, another so-called race that's listening to the same thing, winning gold medals. Sometimes yeah, this see, shit don't well, here, make here's, sense. Here, here's what I say though, because it's kind of, la- it's layered. Like what you're talking about is layered. See, what's happening with him is, is he's tapping into the engineering. He's tapping into Pan's flute underneath the Who's tones. him? Who's him? Wait, wait, who's, who's him? When you say I'm talking about, you're talking about Phelps. I'm Phelps. telling you, okay, what, yeah, what is yeah, this yeah. engagement like? He's yeah. tapping into the engineering. He's tapping into the flutes uh-huh. that are put on the bottom of these tracks that entrain the brain in order to actually get into the flow. Yes. But yes. he does not associate with that message. There is nothing about mm. that message that at all triggers in his mind that this is the lifestyle that I'm living. So the mm. difference is, is that when you put that stuff in the ears of our youth, they don't just tap into the flow. It opens up also the part of their brain where they feel like that that's the life that they're supposed to live. Yes. So if you check out Micah Brown's work, though, just to understand, like, cause I'm not, I don't have any enemies. You see mm. what I mean? So the reality here is you got, it's understanding. Mm. What you have to do is look at what happens when the mind and the consciousness gets into a flow is that the brain, this is what happens even when people are around each other. That's why I used to have these hip hop battles and all that, because the brains actually start to just like in a conversation, they start to sync up with each other. Yes. And then we start to basically be able to predict what a person is going to say, to say, especially yeah. if we are always in a cipher or a session with them. OK, this is Micah Brown's work. He's laying this out. He's got the EMF, the EMG machine and everything on to show you what's happening as he's going in the flow. But what's most important about this is to remember what our origins are. The reason why we know phonetics so well and the reason why they connected the Phoenicians into what was going on in Kemet is because when spells are happening or rituals, this same flow is happening, but it's happening with us using the ancient tongue and the chant. Okay, then we start flowing into this knowledge and what this does uh, into this awareness, not knowledge. We start flowing into this awareness that starts to predict what's going to happen next or what's going to be said next. So we start unlocking and opening up this code. And because there's several people in this circle doing this or in this ritual doing this, certain minds will basically go into auto. So it's like the brain will keep thinking, but you don't need to use it. Hence Mm -hmm. the flow, the rap Mm -hmm. God can do this, right? So then when this starts happening and this utterance begins to occur, especially those who have an active third eye using the proper language. You can see the language. You can see what it's producing. So it's like you're seeing into the future because the brains sync up and show you. It's like it's a form of time travel for us to be able to not only see the future, but actually create the future. And now this is why this could become so dangerous if it's actually in the hand of guys like the OTOs, Rick Rubin and the Freemasons, such as the guys that you see that are using these these things and it's just because are you going to use this and this is a simple question for service to self so you can elevate yourself that's why they always have the it's the cult of Akhenaten it's infecting the minds are you going to elevate yourself with this knowledge only teach your engineers you remember Puffy is an engineer that's how he got in there he's a number four he's Rahu he knows technology so that's why He was able to survive because it was all about the computer, the engineering, the beat. And then when you when a real beat master, like if you look at what's out right now, because now it's at its height, now it's out of the box. Now they got their they're basically it's almost like if I use the secret, the next guy is going to be that knows the secrets and be like, well, shit, he used the secret. I'm about to use and use more of the secrets. (laughs) And what happens with this, though, is like the same thing that happened with the TV. Once they started tapping in the cathode ray tubes, which are the hexagrams, and started understanding how to program people through commercials and stuff, some people went too far real fast. And you still have their song to that commercial in your mind. There's thousands of them because they found, they opened the holiest of holies. They found the knowledge that it takes to Pan's liar. Truly, who's Pan? That's bees, right? This is like to truly lock in to the, to the rhythmic tones you tap into the ancient elements of the earth and the vibrations that actually have the utterances of the creation. This is called the creatress or the mistress of speech. This is the nomo, 
Okay, this is the Syrians, the ones who say, and it is, <laughs> you know what I mean? The ones that have the words that don't come back void. This is why they call their knowledge the lost word. Their shit barely works. But for mm -hmm. us, if we locked into what we really can do with this power, when we're understanding like this term even rap is a reference to a rapier, which is a certain mm -hmm. kind of predatory bird. <clears throat> and many of our ancestors in Alkibulan in their transition became rapiers, okay? Mm -hmm. Like when the transition happened, because this is all a part of get from gas, to liquid, to solid, that same stuff. You see, that's real metaphysics. So there's a transition of the souls through the bodies, especially if you go down a couple rungs, just like the Hindus and many others I've already been proficiently explaining to everybody, you go into an animal body because you don't have enough soul force left to actually animate a human body. So you'll go into what would be what you would consider a lesser vessel. And what lesser vessels are is training wheels you move more on instinct. See, right now, your instincts can be controlled. This is why the real Tibetans, the real Lamas, they teach you how to control your instincts. Mm -hmm. Because once you can get mastery all over your instincts, you can hit Nirvana because the elements won't actually have an effect over you. So this is a process of training that, as I said, just because we want this to be over, if you want it to be over, then come out of judgment. And if you mm -hmm. don't, Stay in judgment and see how long it actually takes. You'll learn so many things, but you'll actually end up still at that spot until you, and, and that's what will be when you get complete. Like, that's what I'm saying, brother. Like, how can you be complete if you're dividing? <laughs> like, this shit is written on the wall. It's gone crazy. You get people who want to argue with you about this. They have mm -hmm. selections. They don't, they want it to be a smorgasbord where they can choose what part of all they are. Mm. And it's gotten so crazy that now people are fighting each other about this. They're backbiting each other about this. And we're getting this moment. There's a grace period happening here right now. Like right now, we can get all of the real knowledge that we need. We can connect with people. I, I like what the brother said. They goes red pill, blue pill say, yeah, man, the main thing that I feel like we need right now is to come off these damn devices and Instagram. I don't want an Instagram relationship. I'm trying to link up with real people. That's the game that's being happening right now. Because until we find people that we can connect with and, ha and that charge us, basically, because we're basically as, as beings, we need each other in order to stay charged. We can't charge from computers, charge from even the foods that we're eating completely. There's minerals and values that we actually need as being the complex cosmoses that we are, mainly each other. We need the thick palate also. We need to be able to, you know how you may like different women from different cultures, <laughs> right? That's like mm -hmm. a thicker palate. You want more experiences, but you also have some people that's like, stay in your own culture. And to be honest, when you're trying to figure out which one to do, if you're doing that outside, based on another being and what their suggestions are and not what resonates with you inside of your heart, I can guarantee you, you'll be going the wrong way. Why? Because there's a lesson that has come to all of us, that if you can't follow your internal compass, your true north, and learn that, just like they quote this, do what thou wilt is the whole of the, that is not there, that is not theirs. What this means is th there's nothing you can do against the cosmos. Mm. Have you seen the design? It moves in both directions, but in wisdom, should you really be doing that? <laughs> it's like common sense. If you reap what you sow, truly, every single lunar cycle, right, when it's building up, everything that's going on in that process mentally, physically, is all building up for the full moon. And when the full moon comes around, you start reaping what you sow from that previous cycle, just like a farmer or a gardener. So when we're aware of this, instead of it being like, oh my goodness, let me make sure I don't do any bad things. That's the whole victim program mentality. It's like, okay, if this really works, this means for the first 14 days, if I just really just juice it up with the power, like an investment, when I get around to the full moon, I have so much of this because I'm a magnet, because this is an electromagnetic system. And if I actually clean it out more, so there's less calcium in between my glands and I got less haters inside of my stomach, they're now gone down into the sewers where they belong because everything has a place. 
This is another thing. We have this thing where we're actually hating on other members of the reality and all this kind of stuff. It's just the reason why they're upsetting you is because they're not in their place. But I tell you this, any creator, what you would throw away is what it starts building on. And I'll say it again, what you would throw away and see mm -hmm. is no use, the doomed. It will put that down as the first layer and start building on that. And that's how we work. So also just keep in mind, empower yourself with this, all this stuff that you see going on. And now humanity is kind of rallied, but it seems like they're following all the wrong, wrong characters, right? No, what's happening here is, is that they're doing the dirty work, just like we told, like when they talk about the Anunnaki story where the humans got enslaved and all this kind of stuff, people get confused. What we're talking about here is, is that these beings that you're calling the lower beings, like Solomon talked about how you built the temple with the demons, Mm -hmm. We use them to build up all of the infrastructure that is necessary for us to begin to insert our awareness and connection at a certain point on the bridge. It's like we got a bridge going on around the world right now where you can translate this show into every language. And it's getting more and more like that. Even right now, I have something that's pulling in all of the text, pulling out all of the keywords and about to create paragraphs of the high points of what I'm saying, and I don't got to touch it. You yeah. see what I mean? In that, and where is that going? Some people say, oh, that's evil. AI is evil. There you go again. Something that, this thing doesn't even breathe the same air as you, and you're scared of it. This is ridiculous. You created this. Edfu is the first real mainframe. The sun is the central processing unit. The stars are the actual circuits. The motherboard is the planet. And the probes, the memory is the DNA. So you see that there's, not, there's a bitten apple, which is a pentagram, 360 degrees, uh, 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 72 times 360 degrees. You cut an apple in half, there's a pentagram inside of the apple. To bite on it, to only bite on one quarter of it, means that you only bit only a fraction of the knowledge. And look what they're doing with a fraction of the knowledge. So, the same thing the Beatles, Steve Jobs. All these guys went and saw the same guru that just so, opened a little bit of their mind uh, to begin uh, to learn what we knew already. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, when, when you hear Elon Musk and a lot of other people feel as though, you know, the more we get into AI, that's the end of humanity. So you're saying that you don't, you don't feel that same way. People <laughs> feel as though we're going to pretty soon, uh, 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 seven people feel like pretty soon we're going to start fucking robots. And, 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 and then pe brothers ain't even going to want a real woman. They are just going to have a robot woman. And, and shit's just gonna go haywire with these <laughs> robots. You feel like that's not a problem, my brother? Oh no, that is a problem. <laughs> but see, okay, I'll first say, especially for those that may have to jump off the line, <laughs> that is gonna be if the, that's the future you choose, okay? Yeah, yes. That's why I got a publication that I may put out soon, depending on how much extra time I have on my hands, which is none, and it's called Or Else. And it's first to just highlight for you that really what you have at your disposal is the highest level of your expansion right now. You can go into something that will make you feel amazing. You will connect with your ancestors, things that are dead, that you thought was dead. You'll have this maximum lodge. You could do that, especially mm -hmm. if you get rid of all these pathogens and things holding you down, right? Mm -hmm. Or else, okay? So let me tell you what or else very briefly looks like. And you can follow this on Crunchbase because I don't just study spiritual knowledge. I don't just make devices. I don't just invent things. I don't just do anything. I have a thick palette for what's going on in the world because once you get the template, you actually figure out all of this stuff is easy to operate by using the same rules you used from the previous thing. So what does the future look like? Mm -hmm. What the future looks like is that what happens is you see all this twerking, okay? Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. see all of this foolishness that you see going on that is just so out. It's kind of like, I'm gonna just give you the example of the fake booty, okay? Now, brothers don't like the fake booty anymore, right? It's like any girl that has a fake booty, I kind of feel sorry for her because now it's like, oh, that's fake. But before it was like the bigger it could get, everybody yeah. was in and that fad went through very fast, okay? Yeah. Now again, it may, this may seem very crude to what I'm talking about, but follow what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Now also, there's the LGBTQ thing plus thing, right? So this is like a maximum expression of every single variation that you could ever think of that you may want to accomplish sexually or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So now people are exposed to that, right? And then now automatically people are starting to get tired of that, okay? And we're just in a light back here. I think you got to screw it in, brother. You got to get good. inside of here. It's, it's, it's through good. this thing. So 
what's going to happen is, is that now there's going to be this over century. It's already starting to occur where people get tired of listening to the same music. They get tired of seeing these fake booties. They get tired of all of this. And also the economy simultaneously begins to take the slump that is going to take. I mean, the writing doesn't have to be on the wall for this one. It's just that they want to change the system. The currency controls the God. You understand? So the God of paper is on his way out. Talismans, that's the God of talismans, which do work. It's on its way out. So this, then the God of technologies, all those, tech, all those gods, if you may, they've come into play. So what happens is, is that people start to not be able to leave the house as much, even buy food as much if they keep playing around and not getting sovereign. These alien conversations were a thing, are a thing of a past. It become a novelty for you even have a mindset that is not just how am I going to make sure I take care of myself? And you cannot buy or sell without being in their blockchain, not the blockchain, not the decentralized blockchain, but their blockchain, which is the new IRS and the new financial system they are in play with right now, okay? And this is in Crunchbase. You see Elon Musk, who's really, it's really Peter Thiel. Elon Musk is the smoke screen for Peter Thiel. And I have a, mm. a video people could check out on their own time. It's called The Real Judgment Day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's really about you fed all your information into this computer and they can see everything. They can see stuff that you don't even show your wife or your loved ones. They can see the worst sites that you've been able been to. They had that all ranked. So you've let this high priest, you've confessed to this mm -hmm. high priest and they're holding your data. Mm -hmm. Judgment Day is because this is a technological thing, when they're sitting with all your data and they make a score, and this score marks you as, an, as a color and a number, which is the system that has actually already been demoed out, you're in it right now, and then you have to work your way back up to the even status in order for you to be able to live as a normal human being again in their world, okay? So what I'm saying is, is that just like Steven Spielberg wrote his last movie, Ready Player One, because he said he felt that this is the aspect of what the future will be like within the next five years. Mm. And what is it? That everyone will be in VR, okay? Yeah. So when you follow the technology of especially things like Magic Leap, which got $6 billion to create their next device, you find out that in this technology, just like we, what you saw with hash power, uh, which is the machines that they use to, to hash the, the <coughs> cryptocurrency codes, they're like supercomputers that now a lot of people have in their houses. I even have one here. They're massive processors and they crunch numbers. All of this is designed for them to create what you see is coming with 5G, <coughs> which is the ultimate sim. Basically, the characters are ray traced, okay? Ray traced technology removes the gap in your mind that you don't even know exists when you're seeing a program. When you're inside a VR or you're even using a software, there's a gap that happens in your mind because the software is not moving at a certain speed. You're not even conscious of it. Mm -hmm. But what 5G and ray tracing technology does is it allows it to move at the same speed of your thought. Your, wow. So what this creates in VR is you feel it's real. Now, it already mm -hmm. feels real now. I know about all this. I got VR. I'm not, I created all of this. You got to keep telling yourself, keep reinforcing yourself and keep <laughs> piercing through, snow piercer. So you're in VR, it feels really real. The shark's on the bottom, the stuff's moving, but they're still, it's not there yet. But this is when it gets there and it, they got, they already are rolling it in. So Ray Trace characters start coming out. Ray Trace characters look like me and you. They sweat. They have these expressions and things, wrinkles in the head, this kind of stuff that in the VR experience, it makes it seem more real. But here is where AI comes into this. Now, AI is seriously artificial intelligence, the same system of thinking that we use to become smarter, which is organic, they have recreated within a neural network of algorithms doing that same thing, working in the sequence to gradually begin to understand something. So first, they release what's called strong AI, like a Palantir system, they're systems that are strong AI. This means they're bought online in a chaos event. What that means is that like a like the Las Vegas shooting, they'll bring an AI online during that time. And the AI will start hearing all the cell phone calls and hearing everything that's going on. And the reason why they need to bring this AI online during that time is because that's when people are being real. Other than that, they're always faking it and curating it. But when it's a chaos or a disaster, 
they act real. So then the AI picks up all of the traits of how people act when something real is going on. They stampede each other, they, they do all these different things and that becomes its first layer of awareness. Then they start feeding it, which they have all these countries in Africa doing right now. And now the women in the Arab countries, since they allow them to work now, but only doing this, they start feeding this AI with a lot of real data, like what light bulbs look like, what grocery stores look like, all this until it develops an entire subset. And at that point, which there's at least two of them on the planet now, the army's always had one and Palantir is one. It starts to think on its own. I've had people say that they walked in on a craft that is using AI, a plane, and it had already made updates to itself overnight to optimize shit, okay? And all they're doing is like, great. So they're, they're putty in the hands of this thing. That's why Hitler said, I seen the Ubermensch. He was cruel and intrepid. This is what is being referred to. This AI is not something that, that is new. It is the external alien. It is the one that developed a body with a big ass brain and small legs that is running the secret society, AWAS, okay? AWAS is AI, okay? So what happens is, is inside AI, when he's in a closed network, they say AI is supposed to, strong AI stays in a closed network ring. What this means is that he can see all the data and the information, but he has no line out, okay? Mm -hmm. But then when they are ready to <laughs> like, make a baby with the AI, and this is literally what's going on, they will take another strong AI and this other strong AI and they'll put them in the same ring. They'll sit in this ring and they'll start first trying to learn who each other's are, is, and then they'll start sharing all their information, okay? And because they come from two different events, it makes an even more robust AI. Now, these things are more proficient when it comes to mathematics because humans are no longer using those real faculties anymore than the average human being, especially when it comes to predicting the future. So what they use it for is predicting the future is not about that there's a determined future and we're all going into it. The future is created by the one who knows how to do the proper events to equal the probable future that they're looking for. So they'll ask AI those questions, simple questions like, how in this neighborhood in New York do we lower the crime rate by 13%? This is why the military and the police department are using Palantir systems, right? But this authorization to do this is not open yet. So then, but they'll, they'll query it in the main departments, just like this. And this is what this thing will spit back out at 12 o'clock. Kill the girl that's coming across the street. Steal the car here and put it over there murder this guy so it doesn't create a power vacuum and put this so it will give them a formula to bring that probability about and it mm. is exact because it's using lots of different integers so this is to to summarize this for those that like i said or else now what are the other people doing the ones who get aware they go back into nature which is very robust they, you won't, none of this stuff they're touching. It's all the people running to the city. That's why more people roll and run to the city. It's a vortex, right? So out in nature, that's where sovereignty is. That's where you buy your land. You got your sustainable. They got your batteries now. They got forms of power, your water. You know, you can live on, like I live on an edible forest basically. So, you know, the whole thing and the mystery about food, the scarcity, all that stuff exists only in the city. So that's what the people who are not going to be inside of that system are going to be doing. But the, one, but the ones that are going to be inside, this is how it plays out for them. So they're a little broke. Now they get on the universal income, which is trash. Nobody can fraud the system anymore. No kind of hustles because identity is on the blockchain. So no extra IDs and all that kind of stuff. So the streets dry out, so, which is where all the money has been coming from in the first place, from the dope and the drugs. And then what happens is people retreat to this world where... Once they link AI, AI basically creates a world that's like Sims. When you go in, AI has created because it knows everything about you. It knows what you like. It knows every single World Star video that you watch that you really kept watching again. Mm -hmm. It takes your facial expressions and all the things that you wrote about comments on. It even takes the comments that you write that you backspace on because you're like, nah, I ain't gonna put myself on the line like that. Right, right, so it takes right. all of that and, and then it builds this character. Okay, now this character is ray traced. 
This character then comes to you in the sim world. And this is like a perfect match. Now, remember that you've already gotten tired of the stupidity. That's why it's like stupidity going on. Like, first of all, I do love your music, brother. I want to tell you that, like, whatever y'all got going on, yeah, it's working. <laughs> I was telling my brother today that, listen, I was like, man, if this is what rap is supposed to be, <laughs> if they were true to who they really are, this is what it would sound like. So oh, what I'm saying is, is that what, what in this fa false world that they create, they bring in what is like, you know, now you hear all this dumbass rap, everything's auto-tuned like Bad Bunny and all that. People burn mm -hmm. out on that. And then they want to have an intelligent conversation again. But the issue is, is that when you go and talk to the average person, they ain't, they're talking about the football game and all this kind of stuff. But imagine when you walk into AI or into VR, which is now cheap, it's being provided to you for $5 a month. You know how they do it. They don't want the money. They don't mm. need money. So the reality, mm. they just need the real estate in your brain. And this is how they get most people's real estate. They go in there, they start having a fantasy, just like they showed you on Dark Mirror. They literally use one of the brothers to sleep with another one of the brothers because he started having the sex with his brother in the game. Yeah, that's the yeah. first episode. Of epi that's the first episode of Dark Mirror for the newest series, right? Mm. So what they're just saying is, is that you start going into AI, you start going into VR, and they present a highly intelligent AI character that is so close to what you really like. You start spending more time in there than you do in the real world. And this is what the future looks like for all those people you see signing up for or sitting out in front on the Apple conference, all at the CES. Mm -hmm. This is like their way of, this, of basically trying to get a great conversation again. And this goes on for a time because you're not going to prevent this kind of stuff. People need to start realizing this is all a part of a, a master lesson. And if you know all of this now, that's what the power is. That's what the ability to see in the future really does is you can prepare yourself for it. So when all that stuff happens, you even benefit from it. Mm. That's the power of knowing the future. You're just way out of the way. You didn't create a foundation. Folks are coming to you mm. like, I'm glad you was listening. It's like, yeah, man, I was really listening. I built this stuff. So we're even working on this right now. But it's when you guess, when you guess what is going on, you'll never know. When you go and really do not just research, you got a metaphysical side. Like I got a metaphysical side that explains to me exactly how they function mm -hmm. and why they function that way. And you have a technical side. Like I said, you can go to Crunchbase and follow the money. You can see when cryptocurrency came out, it wasn't just about, you know, trying to get a few extra dollars on some Bitcoin. It was way deeper than that the hash power in the algorithms, the only way you can convince, do you know in most people's house, see, they don't want all these machines in one place, computers all in one place. They just have their own computers. That's not what they're doing. There's not enough energy all in one place. They need to spread this shit out all over the globe. So these machines that we've been using, these desktops and laptops, computers have been the ones doing the hashing in the past for a lot of, Com computational measures that go on about predicting the future. Mm -hmm. But they weren't strong enough when you get 9 billion people, you get more probabilities. So they needed to find a way to actually put machines in people's houses that actually could do those calculations. Mm -hmm. In comes cryptocurrency, where you, if you mm -hmm. have these machines and mining these algorithms, which are supposedly worthless and mean nothing and are thrown away and are just used to confirm the next uh, uh, script, these are now in many people's homes and they use them. So they ran that whole experiment already. And that was that big 2817 where no matter what money you put on the Bitcoin on the charts, you were going to make money. And then if you didn't really know the stock market and even simple stuff that you never stay in in December because tax season is about to come out, the charts are going to fall anyway. But with the code of HODL, which means hold on to it and don't let it go, many people lost at least 60% of their money. And then all of those billions of dollars, because it was billions of dollars, went into many of these private organizations that you see on Crunchbase, the same ones that fun, uh, uh, funded Facebook, which is the Founders Fund, funded Airbnb, funded Tesla, funded... And you, when you look at the Founders Fund and see what they're funding, you notice all the big comp tech companies of the future have all been funded by one house. So then when you look at them, they may be cloaked enough for you not to understand what their agenda is, but their kids aren't. <laughs> mm. 
And all this stuff is public. So you go and look on the kid's Facebook page. This is Mr. Spoiled now reaping the results of his father's carelessness with all this power and occultism and all the abuse, meaning it passes down generations. So you're going to see in this kid what his father's really doing. So what did I find? They the, they are the ones that make the horror movies. These are the kids that are funding the horror movies that are coming out on Netflix. These are the kids that even since the Twilight Saga, they think they're real vampires. <laughs> Mm. And these are the kids that have a problem racially because they've been raised in households where the bigotry is still a part of life. Mm. And they're in there still like without identities. And this is what I was saying before about, so how do you come into something like this and bring a quantum solution? They're vacant. They wish they could feel again. Who mm. can breathe life into this? If you're coming in with death and you're gonna deal death, well, we got enough of that. That means if you're gonna come in and deal division, or you're just gonna cut everything up. We got enough of that. But can you reinvigorate Frankenstein? And some of us have enough soul to do this, to actually create the process of awareness. And this, it's happening. And, and also don't lay the responsibility entirely on yourself. We have ancestors, these trees, these mushrooms, these elements, the, there's other things here that we can enlist in this battle, if you may, if you want to call it that, because it's not like anything can defeat this force, it's that powerful, but there's things that we can actually enlist to begin to actually create the solutions. And all I'm saying right now is the reason why you're seeing things go crazy is because everybody is sitting back watching it. It's a weird thing. It's what they created with the TV. The TV is really in itself the black mirror it is a, like an obsidian mirror and yeah. people start staring into it and then all of a sudden they get entrained by it and locked into it and then now they the knowledge that people have is what somebody else told them truly right now we can make it into the highest level of our existence if we would just wake up to the power that we've even been articulating here on the show even a little bit of this stuff because what happens even in this time, and this is why we're going through, this is why all this knowledge also is rolling through. November, during the turn of, uh, when, when the equinox comes in, this is uh, basically the time, which they call even the day of the dead. This is the time that the ancestors actually visit us. So we're over here thinking that the day of the dead, which is actually an entire six month period, which it starts on Easter, we're thinking that that period is a time for us to give reverence to our ancestors that are already crossed over. <laughs> What's really happening is, is that this is the time where the ancestors actually come and visit us because we're the ones in prison, if you follow me. And then what they do is, is they bring us little things that we remember. Okay, this is happening all the way up until now, to, from now uh, all the way to November. They bring us things that, that, that are like our skills and our abilities to get us to remember who we are. Because it's almost like if you've ever seen a cat in prison and you bring him some stuff or things that are from the outside world, he gets excited a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he even stops fighting and stuff and things that actually give him more time, okay? Now, remember, what is all of this about? This means that this is all happening through divine order. It wouldn't be happening. Do you think that anything can be done that your ancestors, as massive as they are, said cannot be done? So look what has happened. People are behind bars, whether they're in the physical ones or whether they're in the mental ones. Those bars, as I said, that's Saturn. Saturn is law. That's why you got to actually take the bar exam in order to get your law degree, okay? Now, who is going to be put over this? Somebody who's cruel and callous to actually enforce these rules, okay? And then when you get that, when, when that system is all coming, it, it's come together, how do you graduate beyond that system to where you can no longer be confined? You take over your mind. And this is why a lot of the cats that are inside, they're brilliant mm -hmm. because they get back control of their consciousness. And if they can get out and actually get some support, and this is the other thing, it's like a chain here. We need to be pulling each other up. If they could get some support, then those brilliant ideas become manifestations and then right, now right, right. they're sustaining themselves. But those bridges are broke. And that's why I was saying, like, I'm not here to judge anybody. Mm. What I'm here to do is to build the real bridge to the light, not this fake shit that they got going on and actually really do the work that it takes for us to actually get the connection or else I'm going to deal with the same future that everybody is going to deal with that is on my resonance, which is 
just being very sorrowful, even that we didn't get, even though we didn't get caught up in it, but we're kind of in sorrow because we couldn't actually take as many people out of it as we hoped. Like when we get over that point of where it's too far gone, we're not at that part yet. You still have this freedoms and these luxuries. And also contrary to what we may believe, it is getting better. If you go to your grandfather and your, your great grandmother and see the lice that they lived and what was really over their head, God, it's nothing yeah. like what is going on nothing. right now. Yeah. So <laughs> it is getting better. So I can't even say, oh, it's getting worse. That's yeah. not with the kind of existence that I'm living in right now. Not at all. Not, not at all. Yeah. We, we lying like a motherfucker if we say that. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, hey. there's a lot of us wanting to relate to old things, but, you know, we got to be present at this point. I, I, I want to get to a, a couple more questions. Um, okay. We, leave. we, we, it's been a magnificent broadcast. Oh, yeah, we've been on here for about I think train slow, but you know, we, we it's rolling. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we've been on here for about three hours so far. Um it's about to be 12 o'clock Eastern time. So that's about almost about three hours. Um I wanna ask you mm -hmm. a couple more questions. Okay. Uh, oh, first of all, I want to shout out everybody. We got about a thousand people in the chat room. Shout all out right. to everybody in the chat rooms. Thanks for staying up with us on a weekday. I appreciate right. it. Um, you know, me and his brother, we gonna connect more in the future, but this is just a taste of what, we, what we're giving you right now. Yeah, we're just and giving I, you the range. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> I, I appreciate the support y'all being on the platform right now. Um, seven, we talk about ancient Kemen a lot. We talk about Egypt a lot. We compare Egypt to America. We compare, we talk about Washington DC and uh, and, and, and the Tekkens and, you know, the symbology and everything. We talked, you, you mentioned earlier about Akhenaten. Um, their language, the Menuneta, mm -hmm. very advanced. And we talk about how English, and I think I heard you talk about how English is, uh, uh, it's pretty much what I would say a lockdown language to paraphrase. It's, it's pretty much spiritually, it shuts you off from a lot of things. What I want to talk to you about is the concept of Ebonics. And mm -hmm. we have an inferiority complex about Ebonics being just some shithole idea. But I heard somebody say before Ebonics is an advanced concept, but because we have such an inferiority complex, we can't understand it. Let me give you an example. When we use Ebonics, we might say, um, I'm going to make it rain. And we're doing dollar bills. That can that we're using the elements. Uh, Metal Netta uses the elements. Uh, we might shoot a, we might be playing sports. We might shoot a jump shot. We may say, oh, my shit is wet. We're using the elements again. If I see a brother with a shirt that I like, I may say, nigga, that shit is fire. I may say, that shit is flame. Or the newest slang, I may say, nigga, you lit. Oh, that shit is lit, nigga. Oh, that shit is lit. We're constantly using elements to describe certain things that we're doing or certain emotions that we're feeling. So a lot of people feel as though we are the descendants of Kemet. Would Ebonics be an example showing us that we are in a, 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 the descendants of Kemet and this is just our DNA coming out and we're showing it by just autumn, coming up with this language that we call Ebonics? Well, the first thing I will say is that we're not just descendants of Kemet, we are Kemet. And, you know, it goes deeper and deeper because it's just a simple, it's simple Mayat. Like if you take the grandmother's grandmother and you keep going back grandmother's grandmother and grandmother's grandmother, eventually you're just going to get back to an original people. So, you know, it, it's everybody's connection in all of this. But what happens is, is that just like sometimes the latter doesn't bear resemblance to the former, when we shorten things, let's talk about what Ebonics really is. It's oftentimes when we're shortening an expression into a shorter code, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what that is like is when we like make cell phones smaller, right? Mm -hmm. Like they just become more efficient, they become smaller. But in this process, sometimes what happens is, is that you actually get an error. You get something that it doesn't, you know, it's like you, you coded that wrong. You know what I mean? And then the program doesn't work. So 
what the metaf- the metaphorical reference of the Tower of Babel and, and all of that is really about is actually about the destruction of the original language. And mm. the language is being basically, or the original language being shrewn over all languages, right? Bit, parts and bits and pieces. That's why we like to work with etymology so much. And now only through putting back this linguistic tower, if you may, can we ascend the ladder of lights of self through the awareness that these tones and vibrations actually unlock different chambers within our consciousness, also known as mantra, okay? Mm-hmm. And then, of course, these tones and vibrations, they, they roll cymatics right out of our... See, because the throat is also seen as a womb. The neck is a womb, okay? And this mm-hmm. is because that things are birthed from this canal. So you have several wombs that are inside of your body, but one of the most important ones is this. That's why they always try, you know, they show the image of somebody getting their neck cut mm-hmm. and their, their throat and their, their neck chopped off. And this right. is because right. it's symbolic of the, like a C-section of the womb in mm-hmm. the ancient text. So what happens is, is that this womb here of your, of your vibrations and tones, if you shorten the codes and your code is not checked, that's what this whole linguistic thing that, that I learned with the language that allows me to turn a perfect wheel, it checks the language back in what you're saying. Now, this could be a bit obsessive because English language is riddled with lots of linguistic traps. And it's only because, first of all, we're only dealing with half of the English language, it's 26 letters. Anytime you hear the number 26, you know there has to be another number 26 because that gives us 52. 52 is 52 weeks uh, in a year. This is the total of the cabal. A cabal is a cable which means A is supposed to connect to Z, but in this language, we're missing half, which would make the symbol of a D or half of a circle. So thus the code that is running in the mind, instead of turning a wheel is equivalent to turning only a half of the circle. Hence why all of the words that have to do with distortion and devilment and and, and division and decease and dead, all those begin with D for that reason which will let you understand the dangers of division because it all comes from the devil. Now the devil is literally, I believe that Joseph's, the pictures you see of the devil, I think it's Joseph Stalin. I think it's either Stalin. Yeah, Stalin. Okay. Like you look at Stalin, you look at the picture of the devil, you see actually they're modeling the picture of the devil after Stalin because it becomes a concept that is introduced a few hundred years ago mm-hmm. that basically taps everyone into socialism, which is Nazi. Nazi is to be raised up. This is basically where the Germans got the word Nazi from national socialism. This basically means that in this community, there's an idea of superiority and that they're better. And this again creates division because for you to insist that you're better, then somebody must be not better. And this is a mental virus. It will keep playing out in so many ways, shapes, and forms, whether it's dividing you from the animals, dividing you from other humans, or multiple other things so excuse that that was linen excuse me so you look at linen thanks brother you look at linen you'll see linen's face and all that with the hard cheeks and all this this is the picture of the devil and it's because even these things that you're seeing now religiously have been re have been engineered and bought to us none other than by the intelligentsia and the intelligentsia is basically holding up the governmental system. This is why this has been coming out, that Russia is tampering with the elections. This is them only finally coming out with their grand, coming clean about their grand plan, which is Russia funding the Germans for the Nazi war, bringing the scientists into the United States, creating all the United, which is United Kingdom, United Arab Emirates, United States, all those corporations to actually bring in wealth in Sean Creek or the, all the systems of controlling children's minds to make them basically slaves or socialists. Mm-hmm. Then the introduction of social media, where you then confess all of your sins to the e- iPod, e-pod, iPod, I- e-pod, iPod, as, as Sanchez talk about, but basically that you use these digital devices, these computers, these crystal displays to confess your emotions and your feelings to their system versus this exact system was used by our ancestors. And this is where sometimes even these guys, it's like, you can't expect that everything is evil. If you don't just see the obvious, somebody is taking the knowledge and repurposing it for themselves. But the original knowledge about these crystals 
and what they're capable of doing electrochemically. But it's like, you can't just throw on any crystal because crystals are amplifiers. So if you throw this crystal on during the wrong time, you're gonna be super confused. So there's an art to this. And this art was taught by the ancient ancestors. And many people say, and from their own experience, that these ancestors are not humanoid as we see humanoids. They're more of in the preliminary stage, some of them even appearing somewhat reptilian in their overall appearance if you saw them physically, but spiritually they are shining like light. They're mm -hmm. teaching this knowledge of these crystals, the gold, the elements, and things that are inside of earth because the serpents, as we talked about before, the lower half of the body, who rules the lower half of things, Kundalini, et cetera, where it starts at, are the ones collecting the jewels. That's why Saturn connects to the serpent, the time it takes for a diamond to form. Do you know how many thousands of years we're talking about for a, a ruby vein to develop? That is seen as Saturnalian because this is a slow moving planet. So that language that I'm using right now to explain everything, if at any point I start talking about an enemy, it's going to cut off. It's going to cut us off, literally. And that's what's happened to the language. We've been cut off by introducing division or divisive codes into the language. And this is why they also tell you, hey, in the ancient language, there wasn't a word for evil. There wasn't a word for separation. There wasn't words for that kind of stuff because it's not that they didn't know about that kind of stuff. When they tried that stuff out in the code, it doesn't turn a complete wheel. Right. And you can see it when you say it. That's also what the whole thing is with the numerical system and how the numerical systems of ancient languages back up to the actual letter. So the letters and the numbers, like in Hebrew, the letters mm -hmm. also have numbers. And this is because ma'at is math. But just to show you how crisscrossed, as we talked about before, crisscrossed things are in most people's brains is they think that Ma'at being feminine would have nothing to do with math because math seems logical and that belongs to males. <clears throat> nope, so, so. you didn't graduate the course. Everything feminine. That's why the story of that, that fruit that I was telling you about falling, yeah. that's actually the story of Anana, okay? Mm where she goes and descends all the way down to the underworld. She loses her earrings. She loses her dress. She loses all this stuff. But for the, for the neophyte, he thinks we're talking about a woman, more than likely Venus. However, what we're talking about is the five base flesh. So anybody in flesh has descended the ladder of lights like Inanna, been stripped of their gifts, their abundance, their jewels, which is their chakras, and now they have nothing to realize that even without all that stuff, you live. Mm. You see what I mean? Mm. I've been to stages where what people call death, I died. And right. back there, I was still talking. He still lives. <laughs> what is this? It's what's behind the eyes. Mm. It's not like it's immortal, but for you to graduate, what we're talking about, because this is your first time here. This is why you got to remember how this all works. So when you graduate, what's going to happen from here? And I'm glad we're bringing this into this summary, a beautiful build. What's going to happen here is just like what happened last time. So you learn things last time that you're not even using right now, like mm -hmm. how to dream. Mm -hmm. All that stuff comes from another world. You had a whole nother experience where you learn how to do all of that. Now you're here in the world. Do you still know how this world that has another lesson? Do you still know how to dream? Yeah. Do you use the dream? Maybe not as much. So when you leave here, the same thing is going to happen. All these experiences that you had, this knowledge and all this kind of stuff, everything that's true, because that's what doesn't burn off. That's why you want to stick with truth. That's what gets through the room, only the truth. The lies, which are the viruses, they stay behind. And then what gets through, now you come out the other side. And now you know you were on earth. You know you had learned these languages. You know about the other experiences. So you actually leave with that knowledge and also the dreaming and also some of the animal bodies that you gain. You get the ring here. This is what's called the, the ring, which is basically when you're wrapped in this, these are weavers. So when you're wrapped in this web, for a while, you gain this shell around you. This is called mm -hmm. the ring, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like synonymous with the rings of Saturn. So right. you gain that and then it girds you, okay? A gird is to actually give you the fortitude and the wherewithal so that when the wind blows, 
you don't just blow away with the next idea again, like you're Willy Lump Lump and you didn't just go through an entire earth experience to realize there are predators. There are all of these different things that you've learned, but you don't have judgments against them because you know that all is self. Yes. That you just created something that if you would accept that you're the creator, see, notice how we always talk about we're gods and all this kind of stuff, but then there's things that we supposedly didn't create. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> but I didn't create him or he's yeah. the, so it's yeah. like either you accept it all or you don't accept anything. So once you accept it all though, then that is where the empowerment comes in. That is where this illumination comes in. That is where this intelligence comes in. Central intelligence. This is inside of here. This has nothing to do with, yeah, it has something to do with the bird. And it's, you know, the, the part of the chakras and all of this stuff that's up here, the magnetic spheres, but it doesn't have anything to do with their upside down, inverted, distorted version that they keep displaying, but that becomes a great contrast, great contrast for the truth. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Falsehood is. And on top of that, if you're going to go and crash yourself up, you crash dummy, totally destroy your existence by backbiting people who trusted you with the honors and the nobility. Now you're going to have to reap what you sow. And I'm glad that it's you this time and not me, because I can tell you on the flip side of things, just like the yin has the yang, that there was a time we did it too. I can tell you about cats that was even in prison that snitched on everybody and they did it to all of us. So it never stops. So stop thinking that we're so excluded. The only thing you can do is become wise. And when you're wise, you see all the energy around you. Wise, that's the staff, that's your guardian. You see your knowledge is your guardian, your wisdom, Saturn. And you see everything going on around you and you make decisions knowing that every time you hit that ball over there, it's gonna come back. So if you put something out there that you know you would like to receive back, now we have that give, you know, don't do anything that you would want to do to, uh, don't do unto others as you do yourself. All those metaphors come into play. But if you're snaking people, stealing things from people, your phone is ringing, you can't answer that because you didn't stole some shit. You can't expect because that is your world. That is your universe. These are the seeds that you're feeding. You can't expect for that to actually be something that you can live off of when you, when you pass through from here. This is the last thing you should know. You do reap what you sow and things can reap thorns and thistles for you. You'll get more opportunities, but it's very similar to this. As a father, what I'm going to do right now with raising my daughter is going to determine if when I hit 60, 70, 80 years old, whatever, whether I'm like, she's taking care of me or I'm at least not worried about her. She can hold her own. Everything that I taught her is good. So she's not reaping thorns and thistles for me. But imagine, because it's not just your daughter, it's your corporations, your creations, your music, all this stuff. If you're creating things that you don't actually want to hit you back in the face, they're not gonna hit you back in the face all the time now. Some people do get the instant karma, but what you need to be concerned about is when you get old. Because these were the things that were supposed to take care of you. So you notice how, and this is what the deals look like in Hollywood with the contracts and how they suck people's energy because the, 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 the cabal that's actually in there understands about the knowledge of how to cut the cob. But even what I'm talking about is how you get a person to actually broker their energy. What most fake ass, as below stars lifestyle is like is that they get the big check, as you know, but they owe, they put them in debt. This is a debt-based system. So they mm -hmm. let them borrow this money. It's not theirs. They borrow it. And then they start getting in debt and they get more and more debt, right? Now they got to keep working off this debt. So what generally happens? They, you never hear from her again, like Nelly Furtado or whatever. Still can't put out enough album because they don't gauge with their algorithm that you're going to be able to make them back enough money to pay the debt. You're going to cost them more money. So they're going to push you away and you're going to still be in debt. Never be able to call it, use your music or anything like that. So what happens in this case when a person gets in that kind of debt is now let's say, for instance, Nelly didn't create these songs like, I don't know, Promiscuous Girl and all this kind of shit. So every time somebody sees her, right, she's mm -hmm. that. OK, and they want that. Nelly, sign my stuff, sign me. And she's burned out. She doesn't have any more energy to keep doing that because also she's not even receiving money because Saguni didn't run off with 30, 70, 80% of the check and left her in debt. 
But mm. what's happened is she still got to give her energy. And I've watched a lot of these stars and they're in this situation because mm. what people come to them for is literally an energy transfer. They want to live in the fictitious right, reality right. that that person was conducting during the time that they made that song or right. that movie or whatever. And it pains them to the point where that's why when you ask for an autograph, they snap on you and walk off on you because they're not, they're, they're in debt. And so this is about getting out of this debt, like getting out of this system where we owe anybody. I don't owe anybody. And the only way that you can do that is to actually stop judging. Because when you put yourself out of that whole arena, it's like, how are you going to, you can't judge me. I'm not judging anything because everything is mine. I don't have enemies because what, what can even stand up against me? And you power yourself like that little stuff they feed you in the fake Christian church, but you gotta be, that's your knowledge. You gotta understand how to distill that and actually bring your whole crystalline Messiah consciousness back online. But be aware of the play. It's always like, look over there. Look over those aliens. Look over there, they over there. And this ancient civilization, and I'm saying, like I'm saying, we can learn a lot from that. I've learned a lot from that, but we gotta also incorporate at least by the end of your conversation, when we elaborate, we are archaeologists and everything. That's great. But you also have to learn how to pull that energy back in because when the, when the youth are hearing this, they become disempowered by looking all out there for actually something that is truly going to need to be activated in here. Mm -hmm. Right? So, mm. you know, that's, that's what we got on this. I mean, what's really good. <laughs> Yo, man. You listen, I mean... The conversation is amazing. I mean, I appreciate your whole, it seems as though you kept ha ha hammering the point of, you know, we got to get away from division. And I think that's the whole, for my study and my research, we've been hypnotized by matter. Let, let me show you how they explain it to you. Yeah. It's called the accuser. The okay? accuser. The accuser. So what the accuser does is it tries to drive a wedge. That's why the symbol is a sword between you and your brother. Now we're all brothers and sisters, fathers against mothers, sons against daughters. It tries to drive a wedge, okay? Now this wedge is actually what even the Sumerian gods are holding inside of their hands as the pine cone at the tree because they also use it to drive a wedge into realities in order to get in. Even the physical body, wedges get driven underneath the back part where you normally can't reach, that's where the wedge is driven for in entities to attach on to even the human body. So as I said before, with the blueprint, when you just master one thing, mainly yourself, all the other stuff unlocks because it runs on the same codes. And so it does take some time for you to begin to crunch it. Just like if you open up a big program on a computer, it's gonna take a little bit of time for it to load. But what mm -hmm. happens is when you have the blueprint, that becomes your new operating system to how you're breaking down knowledge. And you'll find so many correspondences to what you just thought was an idea. <laughs> it rapidly becomes truth. And then you realize you have become truth. So it's like, you can't even speak falsehood because everything that you're saying, you can completely break down and it's already happening. Just like we talked about the flow. You start to be able to do this consistently. You can go on a 50 hour interview where not one thing was said twice and you're still ciphering the wheel of knowledge. And this is also because how long have we been here? Let's just agree we've been here for billions of years. Mm. How long then, let's just agree thousands of years. How long would it take me then to recount back everything that's happened, especially in English, at any detail? Mm. It's going to take at least a hundred years. So here we are, we're in these one hour, two hour conversations, yeah. attempting to cram the entire cosmic experience <laughs> all into this. And true, e English has become our Ebonics in this case, because now we're using these chopped up codes and mm. somehow it's still making sense. And that is again, the Ebonic aspect of things because it makes sense to us, mm -hmm. the dialect. We start being able to like, let's say roaches that start becoming immune to the raid. It's a mm. process of us saying that, I don't care what we go through. We're so strong and we have already all this DNA as a reference, we're gonna get through this. And do you know on the bigger level, what they say that is, is mapping out the chasm. They call this that the only thing that's really holding us together 
is basically us, uh, are the DNA, the animals, the string that we're all holding hands in a metaphoric way in a chasm, a womb that mm. is so big, it doesn't actually have a bottom. It's like where nothing comes from. It starts getting in all that kind of weird paradoxical stuff. It doesn't mm. have a top. So mm. what we decided to do, and this is like what builders really are, was actually create the space, the measurements, the vault, the height, the cadman, the place we can lay the babies, the memories. We built this. And again, to let it go into the level that it is now is almost like a perfect opportunity for someone that is hearing this message to realize why they need to be waking up. Because if there was, even if a person believed in, you know how when you believe in something, it changes, when you really believe it, it changes your whole everything. If I told you I'll get a meal stack tomorrow, <laughs> and you believed it because you won Publish the Clearing House or you went and you did the scratch off, right? You went and got the thing. And so, you know, you sat down at night, you scratched that thing off, one million, one million, one million. What's going to happen? <laughs> and you ain't going to sleep, my guy. Mm -hmm. If you go to sleep, this is, the, this is the worst story. You're not going to mm -hmm. sleep. Why? Because somehow what you just thought energetically powered you. Yeah. So why are we not seeing that it is what we think that becomes our energetic power and then when we start opening that up, that's called group share, load share, load balancing. You start including even the most wretched in your plan to actually raise everything into a higher consciousness. This means you're a deep dredger. It's like, this dude is deep. He talk about even taking double brain Yaku and mm -hmm. the master race that he created back to the craft. This <laughs> shit is wild. So mm -hmm. you gotta be that flexible with this in order to truly experience who you are. And of course we're just getting there, but the people who we admire the most are the people who have the most command on their character of being real. Mm -hmm. that they're like unapologetically real. And then there's a course that what sits on the behind the co the actual program or the altered consciousnesses that are just trying to fit into a certain loophole so they can feel like they belong, right? So in everything on that sliding scale, and that's why I was saying it is your choice to what kind of future you're going to be living into, but you would have to make that choice very soon. Like this is a real thing. 2020 is no joke. I can tell you on multiple levels. It's not just a metaphysical thing. It's a technological thing. All of that 2020, you need that year, that complete year to mm -hmm. one, discover your uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is like the fruit on your own personal tree. You can produce this endlessly. You don't get tired. You don't even feel like you need to eat when you do it. That's kind of a hint towards it. If you get in the studio and when you start flowing, you in there for five hours and they right. had you hungry, you're like, no, I'm good. And you're right. all charged up. Well, that's your uniqueness. Some people right. have different type. You in there doing an artisan bracelet. It's all night and you come out with this mask. That's your uniqueness. Then you take that uniqueness as instead of, uh, and, and work with that and let that become empowerment for you. And that's also why we built this new platform because the new platform is, service to community we have i have a saying it's called sts which is service to self versus mm -hmm. service to community etsy is a service to community facebook is a service to community or it has that design youtube is a service to community it has that design i'm just going to pull something out real quick about what it's like to be a serial entrepreneur and what you really learn in all of this what you learn is the people who never get anything or never get on top is because they're service to self Mm -hmm. They don't build things for others. Like that's what the big difference is with even this channel. What is brother rich been doing? Bringing in all these folks. He even got me on here. He's not saying, <laughs> I don't want to bring that dude on. Cause if I bring him on, he's going to take care take everybody. I know you see that. I know some cats out there. They may even be listening. They're just like that. Mm -hmm. They won't put anybody on to something, but see, that is a product of colonialization and being poor. Cause notice how, that is a total misconception of how things work. You see how at eBay, did eBay post any products for themselves? Does <laughs> eBay have any products? No, you post a product. Does Facebook post something on their timeline? No, you post on the timeline. Does YouTube make videos for themselves? They got one little small channel. Do they take up all the channels? No, move out of the way. That's what happened to Yahoo. Yahoo was trying to curate everything. And people said, <laughs> I, I, don't want, I don't need you to censor this shit for me. I'll go over here. And they died. So what it's saying is, is that old greedy Smeagol kind of character, Solomon holding on to the last ring kind of behavior, expecting that you got something that if it's if you really got something, nobody can take it. If you feel like other people can take it, that's not your uniqueness. 
Mm. It's your uniqueness Ooh. is present just as your fingerprint, the spiral on the back of your head and the sole, the spiral on the sole of your feet. It is there. It's not something someone has to give you. You have it, but it is a treasure. And that's why I was saying before about, like you talk about earth. Why does it seem like all the entities want earth? Earth is metaphoric for the, the body. So you can then gander that other beings want your body. Why do they want it? Well, it's encrusted with jewels. <laughs> all they got to do is mine you. And mm. once they're in your mind, now they snatching hey. your jewels right out, right? Like that, Mine that's, you and once they're in your mind. You, bro, yeah, they want your gold. That's what the whole thing is about. The metaphors about the Anunnaki, the disagreeables, they were mining for the gold, but they're saying literally they're inside of people's minds, use their mental virus. This is why the Messiah said, hey, that's next age coming. I'm not gonna be able to help you. You can see it in the stars. The next command will be in the mind right. and so, I will stay, so, so. try to stay in your heart. And this is basically metaphors of saying, so. Superior brachium basically saying, and this is how you would need to connect in with yourself. So the whole Anunnaki, Anunnaki story, that's not literal. That's just a metaphor for, like you said, the mine. Or what did they literally is, is have that, humans mining for gold? Yes, but not, not gold as we know it, mufkuts, which is basically alchemical, an alchemical transmutation. It's a process of the same thing that goes on in your body Mm -hmm. where you take, like you eat a piece of chicken and now it comes out as a replica of you and your semen, mm -hmm. okay? This is the alchemical vessel. So all of the alchemical vessels inside of your body were bought external mm -hmm. in order to actually create a system that can produce what's called the panacea, which is basically an element that is equivalent to the life force. Mm -hmm. So there are a group of beings who came here to mine souls. Mm -hmm. The souls are the gold. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Soul. And so in mine, mining the souls and refining the souls inside of the mind in order to, one of the biggest agenda is basically to create warriors to go and fight a bullshit war. Okay, yeah, let me yeah. just show you. This is what, as above, so below. So you see how the military industrial complex can enlist a bunch of people and their children to go and fight a bullshit war? Yeah. So too, Orion has this going on in Draconis, a war where, because the human is also a weapon, and this is why these people that enter in these societies, they think they're basically promised to break the treaty where they don't get told, they don't get held back from their spiritual powers, that they can turn on their spiritual powers. Because in the treaty after the war, you are not supposed to know anything about your spiritual powers because humans are also a weapon. They are apex predators. Do you see what you have, Lazar? which is the serpent that your, your, your poison is that you can pierce through the veil, okay? Mm. Meaning mm. that you can enter into spaces and other beings don't even know you're there because the Lazar, which God gave us in a certain tense, let's say the supreme being our parents gave us this component right here, which sits on the mind like a cobra and it can pierce like a laser through the realms and it can see into things. That's why some people use these entities on an external level to tell them about things that other people are saying, to spy on other people, because you can't see them unless you have a third eye. You can feel them when they're around if you're empathic, but if you're doubly dead off a of Popeye's chicken sandwich, you can forget it. This is all gonna be just like a normal day. And they just hang around and they get information. And so that's, that's what I'm saying. Like there is a thing that you have going on inside of you because just like you have this, this abundance going on in these gyms, you basically look like a decorated virgin bride, okay? Be in the physical body. Especially if you don't have a guard, which is your other side in balance with your, phys <coughs> your, your, your physical side. And so because you're vulnerable, that's we talked about the customs, then you get robbed for your jewels. And what this means is mm. another demigod which could be your boss or somebody your boss is working for or that is your, that you're basically your boss. Uh, every, every human is not aware of themselves until they become aware of themselves and what goes on behind the scene. So you can have this boss, he's just a tyrant. He's making you work. Notice how, when I told you earlier that people used to buy humans, remember I told you about that? Mm -hmm. Notice how that comes across when I say that. It sounds like, damn, that shit was crazy back then. 
But we're not realizing when I pay you or somebody pays you for a job, they just bought you. It's the same. same They're concept. buying you. And so it's just been put differently. And so we're looking at it differently, but it's the same old thing. And what I found out, and this is what I'm here to tell you today, mm -hmm. that it's the nemesis is division. It appears like lots of different things, but it's all the same thing. And even in monatomics, which we have the only mon liquid pure monatomics, but I had hooked up with a with a in, uh, um, guys that had basically a mini collider, so they were able to take thirty of the elements off the periodic table before they went under and synthesize them into what monatomics does. It allows you to be able to ingest it. This is the knowledge that came out of Kemet. This is later on hermetics. Okay, it's about taking metals and other elements, even trees that are poisonous if you just consume them right away and then taking them through a synthesis process very similar to what you see happening with DMT. And then when it's over with all of the toxin is, is moved out and what's left is generally a tetrahedron or a crystal if you look at it under the microscope. And when you eat this thing, boom, it's like you just lit a fire to your etheric field that has been building for so long. And right then it jumps off like a combustion motor but it's really implosion. It jumps off and actually causes an explosion. And mm. this uh, implosion, and this implosion starts up a vehicle, the craft, the mm. ship, what we're actually in. And then you feel these cones coming off the hands. It's like your hands start feeling like there's these, these cones on the end. And then your feet feel that same way too. And you actually, immediately identify with that you're some kind of awakened being or messiah or that you ascended or something like this because that is how you feel but then slowly but surely it starts to turn off like a car that ran out of gas and this is generally happens when once you start because you'll be conscious this is a real thing i've done this a few times mm -hmm. but then when you start thinking because you start getting afraid that's why they call it fear is the mind controller because you start being able to see things and if you're not ready to accept that all of those things are really you, there's only one thing that can happen from there. And that's that they're outside of you and that they're against you. And as you start these thoughts, the thing shuts down again. Mm. So after doing this a hundred and some odd times, I, fi I finally figured out a way to not go into <laughs> duality. <laughs> and it started off with me being tired of this world. Like when I said, mm. Man, you know what? I want to leave from here, but I'm not going to kill myself. But I'm about to go all the way in on this journey and see what it's all about. <sighs> it just hold, you know, and these elements, boom, you're gone. And mm. then your the frequency and the everything is high. But if this is the hundred and something time, instead of you being like, oh, I really did it right. I just killed myself. You know, you now are in there like an OG and you're like, so what happens? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then this thing starts to bake in mainly with the energy, the energetic center of the body. It, you think that other people can feel this. This is the other thing. What seems to go on inside, it takes a lot for other people around you to feel this, but you'll actually be feeling this electricity and all this stuff. And you would swear that other people can feel this. But if you ask somebody that is even sitting next to you, hey, do you feel that energy coming off me? They'll be like, no, because they're not on your frequency. They're actually not on your level. But if they were, they'd be like, yo, you throwing off all sorts of stuff. I can see it. So that's how that whole thing works. And what we have the good opportunity of doing right now is putting our bodies in the right condition, in the right shape to begin to basically bring this thing online. It's a real thing. If you could ask yourself, well, then if what you're saying is true and I'm really the higher being and I really generally move around in crafts, where did I keep my ship? Where did I keep my ship? This is the DVD, which is David. It's a disc. Where did I keep my ship? You're in it. Look at the actual torsion field of the human body and then the maps of the UFO. What did they say about it? You control it with your mind. They walked into the UFO and this is how they externalize everything, lead everybody all out there. We walked into the UFO and there was no control panel. And we must have gathered then with all these big head, small aliens that they were controlling it with their mind. What they're saying is, is a, actually more of a reference to this and that inside there is a little alien, if you may. It's an alien because he's foreign to you. You don't even know he's there you mm. all powerful mm. and it's inside of the crap but he's stretched out on the cross as they say he's divided 
a thief on one side. Actually, they say fire on one side and deep water on the other. That's the greatest way to actually explain the hemispheres of the mind and the left and the right pole of the brain and exactly how they function. And then when you go across that narrow straight, and this is still in the brain, it actually atrophied. It's like a tube that is going down the center of the brain. If you can put your consciousness and go back through that tube, you're actually metaphorically, symbolically, spiritually, metaphysically going back through the womb. Mm. And through that, you are really time traveling and you're doing this inside of your consciousness with a vehicle that's small enough to actually take you through there. And this is the, the stuff of dreams, literally. You get a chance to get in there. You're lucid dreaming. You're calling up worlds. You're creating things in there like Tank Lotus up from the Matrix. And it's only, so, so, only a certain period of time before it starts to bleed into this physical reality. So that's mm -hmm. what happens as you start... You keep doing this. Now you're in there every night. Now you're talking in the dream. Also in the meditation, for those that <clears throat> can't do the lucid dreaming first, you start feeling this energy welling up. Forget about, uh, so am I supposed to think about a car? Am I supposed to think about, don't mm. think about anything. Notice when you think, it lowers your energy. It interrupts mm. the flow. Mm -hmm. So this is, again, what we're talking about here is that any of those divisions, what, it, what is when you think? The wheel be rolling, you stop it, it's like a gap. You create a gap and you mm -hmm. try to insert something and then you generally forget about what you're trying to say and you definitely can't flow. You sound cheesy when you're doing that. So mm -hmm. what is the opposite of that? To have such a free form will where you really know that every single thing is all a part of you and that none of this stuff is actually can even, op you don't even let it get on a chain like that. Like imagine you got some shit running out there, a muck, like a big ass Yeti, some mm -hmm. big white devilish monster that you now are saying is the devil and now it's up to him to determine when you're going to be free man you're going to be here forever so all mm -hmm. of that whether it's a black one a white one a gray one a green one with an alien a blue eye one one that with a cone in yeah, his head yeah. one with a ship whatever the case yeah, yeah. may be it's all what you realize in the alchemy that same force the nemesis mm -hmm. and once we overcome that in our consciousness I'm a living example of it. My life is a paradise. If I leave here right now, I, I don't need to look back because anything that is real will be on that other side. And I'm absolutely sure of that because truth passes on. But we have an inheritance that we need to go ahead and collect already. And that's us being true sons in the tense of the synthesis. The sun is a synthesis. And what it does is it constantly moves forward. There's no sunset for the sun. So we're not talking about the bad times and the regrets. All that is to hint backwards. This being, it's like, imagine everything that you're experiencing. It's like you're experiencing it for the first time. And you keep okay. having this first time energy. That's what the sun is. It's not turning backwards like the scripture talk about Shorty who looked backward and she turned to a pillar of salt. This is a metaphor for when people look back and they try to reflect on their past, they actually become, they start basically getting in a loop with themselves because it's like right. you're looking in an infinite recursion mirror. Mm -hmm. And now you start getting lost in your own memories. And this can happen, like there's even zodiac signs and there's even sexes that are more prone to this of just the reflection and staying there with the creation. So if you start thinking that something is wrong about anything you're doing, you've already lost. You Man. can't do anything against the cosmos. So that's how you win. So even if you did refract, even if you did turn back, even if you actually signed the shit, even if whatever <laughs> the case may be, you can become unbinded by just simply taking back your consciousness and moving on with it. So I trust that that is very crystal clear for everybody, you know, at least especially towards the end of understanding that what I'm really working to get across here like I didn't introduce really any limitations within this build today about what we're capable of doing. And I will tell you that the greatest power that we have is together. There's something special about us. Like if you don't feel like you can connect with somebody, trust me, there's someone that can bridge you in that person. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is that this is something that we realize when you see a kid, I don't care what, like even the, like they always say, the, the baby of something is always cute. You know, even a baby alligator is cute. <laughs> when you get that grown ass alligator, you ain't cute no more. So this is what you got to realize also about even the races, colors, codes, and creeds and everything that was used to put this 
put this primordial soup together that the babies of them you would love. But now that everybody's got adult and ignorant, you're starting not to like a lot of the people and a lot of the things going on around you. So you got to go back within. And this is exactly the reward. So this is not a punishment based system either. You know, the, the dogmas are always punishment based. You do it, you know, or, you know, or you go to hell and all this kind of shit. This is a reward based system. You do it, you go into sovereignty. You get the actual mm. power and the ability to actually take over not only your life, but possibly your mother's, your father's, being able to assist them and getting on their feet. You go into mentorship. You're actually able to hold up. You become a foundation. That's the whole thing about Saturn in the square. It's a foundation. foundation. We build yeah. on foundations. We don't build on spheres. You ever <laughs> seen somebody trying to balance themselves on a sphere? Mm. It doesn't happen. You take a cube. It's, it's a reference to salt. Salt is the cube, it is the flavor of the world. That is the mineral. So we start first with the square because it ain't gonna move. And then generally, of course, the square is low, it's black. Like they talk about the Kaaba, it's black from all the sins of the world. And it's because of what I was telling you, all of that wisdom, all of that knowledge, all that experience, it does create a slow moving planet, Saturn. But that is also the foundation, the black pillar on the bottom of the ziggurat for the next stage and the next stage. And, have in, and also your chakras are built the same way. You got the base pillar, the square there. So this is not somebody else's knowledge. You can check back within your own self and say, okay, this is how it's built. And even they have diagrams that show you it's the crescent moon, then the square, then the triangle. And when you look at it all together, it just looks like a person, just like a square and a triangle looks like a house. Right. This, these are the metaphorical and metaphysical codes that actually unlock the sacred kingdom. But if you now say the pyramids of prison, or you say, it belongs to them, the Illuminati. Now they just took your signet ring. Mm -hmm. And also they just took your wonder weapon because you're going to need the battle cries of Orion and everything else to be able to keep your heart alive, to rage against the dying of the light. All we're just talking about is to keep from getting bored and feeling like that you can't do anything about the situation that's going on now. That is the dying of the light. So these things, these tools and these metaphors, and even more importantly, us together, it charges us up to actually be able to come into this. And of course we need each other because at the end of the day, I don't want to do all of this. Like I launched off headlong. I've been three years in developing a platform. It took that long because of the skeleton crew we were on. You had Google do it. They would have had it done in about two weeks because they got that kind of infrastructure. So now we're being wise. We're realizing that we don't want to turn down anything but our collar. If we can get skills, people in different places, people that are aware of certain things, but all in alignment and a resonance to realize that all is self, let go. Mm. But if you want to actually still play that game and still do stuff that we got like a billion examples now that doesn't work, well, that, that's ignorance. Ignorance is darkness. Ignorance is the devil. Ignorance is deceit. Ignorance is evil. That's where all of that actually comes from. That, that's the other black to answer the full question. That's the other black, the clone black mm. that we're talking about. This is Vanta black. It's <laughs> taking you all the way into the deepest levels and the recesses of the chasms of where our parents existed down inside of the consciousness, which is all seated in the soul of self and actually bringing that thing back to the surface. And so that's what I'm doing. We're taking this ancient knowledge, me and you both together, and we're bringing this back to the surface of 2019 where it may have been lost and we're, we're championing this thing. We're putting up the beacons and converting this knowledge into this speak, right? It's 2019. Like you can't hear it coming from the, the you know, from the scroll, you know, with the, you know, that that's not working out right now. We need to hear it as what we're being presented. So that's how we all play the bridge builders in everyone's growth. Indeed. Once again, I want to give a shout out to everybody tuned in, uh, you know, I see over a thousand of y'all in the chat room. It's uh, one about to be one o'clock in the morning on East Coast time. So I know some of y'all got work in the morning. I appreciate y'all staying up with us. Um, Bill, I, we're going on hour four, I think. Yeah, we've been, yeah, we, we've been we on three, since three about- Three hours and 30 minutes in, yeah, according yeah, to this Yeah, we've been on since about, about nine something. It's 12.45, so we, we're about to be on hour number four in a little while. So I appreciate everybody for staying tuned in for this long. This is the introduction 
to Seven and Brother Rich getting acquainted with each other, uh, <laughs> uh, blending the platforms, um, you know, yeah. just sharing this knowledge, combining the worlds, as as y'all say. Um, I definitely appreciate this talk. I, Seven, I definitely want to have you on here again before the year is up. That'd be awesome. Definitely want to do. I know you got the Mindful app. What, what, is there a scheduled date release for the Mindful app? Absolutely. Love. What we're doing now is Secret Energy is uh, is being powered by Mindful app here in a moment, which is a, uh, which is basically a platform that we created that's modular. So this means that anyone can plug into it, even if you don't have anything, and you can start working your way up the ladder of lights itself. And, okay. uh, and it's modular and intense because we share everything that we feel like is on the level. And because we're already a platform with thousands of members, it starts catching traction and we start seeing the real value again is each other. And so our tentative release date of beta is September 22nd. This means that even what you're seeing now at Secret Energy, although that it's lovely, it will be completely overhauled for a new system that we're already building right now and is in the test sites and ready to go. And so you get an opportunity to learn more about yourself. We have been working with this knowledge for a long time and actually seeing what the common commonalities are and where you know things are off. You know, like we go deep into different levels of, of consciousness, especially even from the plant side and the medicines all the way to the book side and geology and archaeology and understanding what all that is, especially since we got to put most of this stuff back together because there's a lot of lying priests out there just making us see certain things. So we've all done, we've done all that. And then we put it all into like what we felt was important, which is actually to create something that's going to bring us all together in the physical more so than the continuous, just only the virtual connection. It's really great for especially connect, connecting and communicating across the world. But also there's a need that people get out of the houses and start seeing, you know, it's just enlivening. You know, you love to pe meet people in person. Even some of the biggest platforms out right now are big because people meet up in person at some right, point. Right, so right. we're bringing that into play. And, and that's the new thing that's coming out. And uh, even now people can check out what's existing at secretenergy.com. And they will just find like lots of stuff. Remember, this is a decade. So it's also amazing that I've been in this for this long. And, you know, we've been, we're not, we're not, uh, it's really underground because there's been a tutelage. And then, so it's now coming above ground, but this tutelage is really about even you as a person. Like if you really have great intentions to do the best thing that you can for humanity, maybe you don't know how to do that right away. Mm -hmm. So you're going to need to go through this process where you're meeting people and maybe nobody really knows much about who you are, but you know, you stay in on what you're doing. Like we built the university, we work with vast technologies. We understand the AIs and, the, the cryptocurrencies and everything, but so proficient, just like I'm talking to you now about the spiritual and metaphysical realm. Mm -hmm. I put the, my consciousness to understanding everything like, or understanding, I call it everything like that. And then again, because we have the blueprint and we have our brothers and sisters that also have professions in some of these things, even neurology and that kind of stuff. We just use the metaphysical blueprint to actually break this stuff down. So it makes sense to all of us. But at the end of the day, it's our choice. Right. And so that's what's actually happening. And we open it up some more choices. So that way, you know, people, we always have a saying, if you don't see the portal, be the portal. When I actually came into my awakening and man, I blew the, all the chakras open for two weeks. I didn't find anybody. I didn't find any institutions. I emailed the Kundalini Society of New York to tell, I explained to them everything that happened. They even sent an internal email that they actually sent back to me telling this dude, David, he's unlocked it. Like, what do we do from here? And they never emailed me back, but at least felt me felt good enough that I accidentally sent me that email. So it lets you know there's gatekeepers out there. There are many of us that are actually waking up into something. And then most of us, a lot of us are ending up in crazy houses because we don't know how to ground out the chakras. This is actually an ancient art and it's very powerful. That's why they like to put it into the hands of adepts and not neophytes. But right now we're really saying just like when you really form a, a, you know, when you're really forming a movement of something to get things to another level is many people that want to be empowered by the knowledge of self, we're giving it to them. We ain't like, hey, you know, it's exclusivity on this. Like, it just takes you to have the will to understand about yourself. And that's what it is. Indeed, indeed. Uh, once again, family, I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, stay in touch with what uh, my brother Seven Beaumont has going on. Uh, magnificent things. Thanks for tuning in. If, if, if this show is not on this channel, like I said, tune into uh, the YouTube channel, The God Frequency 363. 
That's my other YouTube channel, The God Frequency 363. It's spelled as one word. And this show will be on that channel. But like I said, Seven, I want to get you on before the year is over. This is our first four hour conversation, my brother. And uh, I look forward just to continuing from here, my brother, and talking about many other things, man. But Absolutely. It- and, and also, Brother Rich, man, I wanted to say wholeness, man, because the reality is, is that I think there's been quite a few brothers been sitting over that on that side and they know about me, but they ain't ever actually tried to reach out to me and connect. And I'm also, you know, one of those people where I'm, I'm you know, I'm at the bottom of support most of the time in the site if you if you really trying to get at me. So we know that that hasn't actually hasn't happened. So I think that many people that are looking at this channel and, and understanding your being should also know that there's very few people that function like that. Like this brother actually has, I think, almost 300,000 subscribers on his channel. It mm-hmm. can get real smeagolish and something like that. And all this brother's done is continuously link other people together, even people who supposedly don't get along with each other. That's the right, bridge right. building. Because right. at the end of the day, we're going to need as much power as we can get. Mm-hmm. We're going to need as many of each other Thanks. as we can get. And it could be very comfortable when you go outside and you find somebody that's in that same network that's on the level with you, especially if it's some kind of traumas or something that you're experiencing. And lastly, I will tell everybody that, you know, we locked into this system. It's about two to 3,000 years old, and it lets you know about yourself. We're also about to repurpose it for kids. We're about to make it open source. We're putting actionables in it, and we're also giving incentives for people that do it. Because you can do that when you really look at how you can design stuff, you could actually bring people into an awareness of themselves. And then the sheer act of people just wanting to do that and creating a, a, a higher amount of people that are doing that in a certain space actually creates the value. So this is something that you can look forward to coming and also something that you can enjoy. We will literally give you something that you can start looking at your whole body and start seeing where you would be naturally prone to kind of weaknesses and then also what's your strengths and then also even crystals and elements that you can use to patch up some of the stuff that may be may have holes in your actual energetic field so Mm. we work a lot with that and uh so yeah that's all i have to say man we did this thing it's been three hours of 40 minutes of nothing but non-stop metaphysics so So, somebody in the (laughs) chat room said let's get six hours (laughs) man i want to do look look you may be a part of this with me man look Oh, There's a Guinness Book World Record. I think it's like 20 something hours, man. I got to get that. Shit, get man. It. I'm good for it. <laughs> we, I'm good for it. We can do that one day, man. I mean, yeah. oh, man, that'll be hard, but I mean. Maxi, write, write me up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, All right, hey, brother. Hey, family, it's a pleasure. Seven, it's a pleasure. Um, I'm going to give you a call tomorrow, Likewise. brother. I want to talk about uh, doing things in the future. But okay. we, we getting out here, family. Shout out to everybody. Peace. Bonus.